Okay, are we on? Yeah, the attendees are, are coming in right now. Okay. <clears throat> um, um, so just for the members of the public that are joining right now, there was an issue with the noticing of the meeting time. Uh, it was noticed for seven o'clock, but the board members uh, had switched to a 7.30 start time. So we don't, we don't have a quorum just yet. So why don't we just so are we going to come back at 7.30 or are we just staying on until? I, I think we, we have to stay on because it was noticed. Yeah, so why don't we do this? We'll, we'll start the first hearing at about 7.20. I think by that time, usually Robin is a bit early and the chair isn't here. And if not, we can just start it then. I don't think there's that much for the first one. Are the people for the first one here yet? I, I think be, because the hearing was noticed to start at seven, we might want to ask if anyone from the public is here to comment so we can take that comment. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Is the applicant here for the, the, for the first one? I believe so. Now, why don't we let them go first then, if you want to start with. Yes, they raise their hand. Right, before, what do you think? Before we get started, I need to start re, I need to um, make this go live on YouTube. Okay, before, Greta, would you want to wait until 7.30? What do you want to do, Greta and Meg? No, let, let's, let's, you know, let's start and, you know, Robin can catch up. If we find that there's something that we really should have be full board for, we can, we can move that in the schedule. Mm -hmm. Let's, you know, we could, we could weigh that as we open up each chapter. And, and we do have a quorum to take public. Oh, we do have a quorum now. Um, okay, I'm going to go live on the custom streaming service. Just give me a second here. Meg, do you want to you want to cheer, you start this or do you want me to? Do it? You know my preference, but prefer, I would prefer that you start. Oh. Right. Hello, good evening. Hey, how are you? Good, good evening. evening. This is a meeting of the Board of Appeals. It's the uh, meeting uh, tonight, which is October seven, <coughs> and I have a quorum at this point. <coughs> I don't have to tell everybody how to exit because you can't. We're all home. And we have one member not here, the chair. You're in trouble if you don't know how to exit. <laughs> That's right. You sure you have, you're responsible to exit how you exit. All right. We, we have the continuing hearing in connection with 437 Ward Avenue, who has submitted to us an October 6th uh, letter uh, going through the history of some items and indicating different things. And I'm going to, at this point, allow the applicant to, if the applicant, would you like to speak about what you submitted and just fill us in? I know we had already heard you the last time. So it would just be for something new. And I think there were only a, a few items that were left open. There were some questions right. about compliance okay. issues. In this. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm here to help out Alice again. So uh, Charlie Gottlieb uh, reached out. Uh, saying to submit a written statement uh, by the applicant saying how they are, uh, how the applicant is um, complying with each um, item under 342-42.1A. Right. And what we submitted to Charlie, I'm not sure if you have that with you. That is the October 6th uh, email, I believe it's. Uh, it's, just, I think that's all, it's the email to us. I don't know yeah, that he would have that date. It's October 5th. I yeah, think. The, the letter is dated October oh, I'm sorry, 5th. it's October 5th. Thank you. You're correct. Right. I apologize. So I think there were a few things uh, uh, that were touched upon at the last meeting. So, um, you know, among other things, uh, you know, they, um, the applicant checked, and I, I guess she didn't understand what you were asking for last time, but they do present like um, each uh, massage therapist, uh, her and her partner, they possess the uh, New York State registration certificate. So they uh, have a copy of that um, on the wall behind the front counter along with the, li the license. Um, they submitted the 
the fingerprinting um, to the, uh, um, the police department, um, along with a, uh, uh, a register of the information that's required under that section. Um, so they, uh, they do have a sign. They always had a sign, but uh, she confirmed that there's a sign on the second floor window uh, at the store. Um, not sure what else was requested last time, but uh, regardless, um, there is a response by the applicant in that October 5th letter saying how they're complying with uh, each um, part in that section. All right, I, we have that, and you'll go through everything on this. Any board members have any questions on this? I reviewed the letter. I, it was very helpful that you did it in line comments with each of the standards. So that was a list of the standards for that the village code has for massage service establishments. And it does look like you've complied with all of those standards. I did notice your sign in the window. So thank you very much for uh, supplying that information. Thank you. Thank you. Any members, are there anyone, uh, any of the board members? Or then I'll turn, right, how about the public? Do we have any, anyone here who wants to speak to this? Okay. All right. Um, what time is it now? It's 7.16. All right. What's the sense of the board? Should we close or you want to wait for Robin? What do you want to do? I think we close. Okay, is there a motion on that? Please? I'll make a motion to close this application. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, Greta? Yes. Yes, Meg? Yes. Yes, and um, I'll vote yes. So the hearing is closed. What that means is that <clears throat> we've now heard your matter and it's closed and we will decide the matter. It may not be at this meeting, it may be at the next meeting, um, but I just don't know. It. We may take it up tonight, but... Um, Thank you very much. And we'll Thank be you. Okay. Thank you. But they can op they can continue to operate. I believe the because they've yeah. already because they've made the application and they've had a permit, special permit. I believe that's been the understanding up until now. Got it. Expires, I think, early November, but they can continue to operate if it doesn't come before then. Okay. All right. Is that the consensus of the board as well? Yeah. Right Okay. I think that's customary. Absolutely. Yes, it is. I just was just asking if it, <laughs> thank you for your customary consensus. Thank okay. you very much. Well, we'll thank you thank very you much. Very much. Bye. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye. Okay. The next, Meg, will you sing a song for us? <laughs> How about a joke? Does that <laughs> ah. So a guy goes into a bar. <laughs> if we go, if we take a look at the closed applications, because we have no other uh, new business here. So if we look at the, the closed applications, perhaps we take a look at some, perhaps Smashburger or some of these resolutions. Um, do we feel? Uh, okay. Uh, Robin, which, not, which number is Smashburger? I'm look. looking at the agenda now. Thank you. That's my suggestion is. Smashburger is listed as number five, I believe, and is um, case number six SP 2000. No, 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 excuse me. No. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's hard to read how this Here, is. I can share my screen. Oh, no, it's number four. Number four. Number four. Isn't that, I believe that? Seven SP 2015, yes. Okay, one second. Let me just <clears throat> pull out my. We have, a, we have a draft resolution on that. I don't believe we have a draft resolution. Is no, that no, I don't believe we do. No, we just closed it at the last hearing and we didn't we didn't actually uh, deliberate, I don't think, or okay. well, discuss. Would you like to deliberate on it? What are your thoughts? Uh, this is a renewal. It, they're not changing any of their operations. We didn't hear anybody in the public or anybody raising any issues with how they are performing. Um, I would just like, I would like to ask council if it's possible um, as we renew this special permit to change uh, the term that we are giving the special permit, permit for to a carry out restaurant or restaurant comma carry out as is listed in our zoning code, because we don't have the term fast casual 
So although the first special, per if, if the board is inclined to um, approve this, of, of course, but as we were referring to it in our resolution tonight, is it possible to amend the term to uh, carry out restaurant and not use the term fast casual restaurant because I, it's not in our code. We don't have standards for it. It doesn't require a special permit. Um, so it, it doesn't make sense to have a resolution for a special permit. Right. I'm just glancing at the definitions. Would it be carry out or would it be fast food? I discussed with a, uh, on the record uh, last week, we discussed their operations, how mm -hmm. they eat in and they, and they deliver food to the customers who are sitting at a table, but that the majority, they thought that the majority of their operations are um, to take away. So find it's not fast food. It fits the definition of carry out restaurant, but that is, that is what I determined after I reviewed the terms in the code. Okay. Because I don't think the food is pre-made or pre-packaged. It's, it's made to order, I think. So that takes it, um, carry out is more applicable than the fast food definition. For consumption off premises, because uh, it has a counter where you can order and you have seats. And I do know that after you order, um, I have been there. I know that food will be delivered to your table. So that portion um, is a restaurant, but the majority of it is um, to take away. Um, but that's what it, how it reads in the. Um, and the, and the seating would be yes. accessory to the main business and. and to the extent if the main business. business they were saying was to carry out, either people come in and pick it up or with Uber Eats, there was a lot of people picking up. So I asked that specific question, whether which is the main operation and um, he wasn't quite sure, but he felt that he estimated that the majority would be the takeaway and not the eat in portion. Thank you. Yeah, so as long as it, it, the, the change is intended to reflect reality and consistency with code definitions, not reflect any sort of change in operations, uh, I don't see an issue with uh, including that designation there. Perhaps we could note that in the resolution that the, the change in the term is no bearing on that there's any, uh, the, the consideration of the board be. hasn't changed and the and the operations haven't changed, we're just adding it to fit to the village code. Yes, not intended to be a substantive, reflective of a substantive difference. Okay. Do you guys, do, do Greta or Dave, do you, do you have an opinion on that change to carry out restaurants? I agree with you, Meg. I think certainly we should use defined terms um, in the code. And um, I agree for all the reasons you stated that the appropriate characterization would be restaurant carry out. Yeah, I don't know. When you write it in a resolution, can you write carry out restaurant or do you do restaurant comma carry out? I think we'd say carry out restaurant. <laughs> Anything else? Robin? Hello. Hello, how are you, Robin? What's so the, what the rest of you want at seven o'clock? Yes, yes, and we, we so, are live at this point. I was going to eat when I saw the time on the thing. <laughs> I didn't realize. So the first thing I want, welcome everybody to the uh, October 7th uh, board, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. I apologize, we had some confusion about what time the meeting was beginning, some of us at least on the board. Um, well, yeah. We started about 10 minutes ago. Did you? Yes, we had asked, we were told it was noticed and then, um, <coughs> I was involuntarily volunteered. Um, but all and what we did, did you was, accomplish? We accomplished, we finished, actually we were about to take a motion to close, but first we heard the, um, the, uh, the, the Young, the application on a 437 award and they just referred to their submission and no one had any questions on that from the board. They, I think they had submitted something and uh, that was the only matter that was heard and closed. And there was very little heard. There was no one from the public to speak. And there was, I think the board just basically had looked at their application and looked at their October 5, I believe it was, I don't have it in front of me now, but their submission. 
Okay. Right. Then we moved now to um, the smash burger. We thought that that was something possibly we could start that. Uh, before we begin, let's take up something else. And what I want to take up is meetings and meeting times. So the first, let's get this resolved so we don't have it. Are we going to continue to Zoom, Zoom, Zoom meetings or do we want to reconvene in person? It's up to us. What do we want to do? For the November meeting we're talking about. For the November, and obviously we could do this monthly or unless otherwise, what do we want to do as a as the practice for the next meeting? My two cents is that I prefer meetings in person. We'll have to be, I mean, I have to be, I'm going to be masked, but I just somehow I like meetings in person, but I don't know if the rest of you want to do Zoom. We'll do Zoom. What do you want to do? That's really what I want to ask. And after we decide that, then we'll decide what time. So let's make okay. the decision. I'll Anything pass. Else? I'm not sure I have a major preference either way. Meg? Meg or Greta? I prefer Zoom as long as we're going. I would feel inclined to wear a mask. And I find it very difficult with a mask. When I get to the point where I don't, I feel comfortable and everybody's comfortable without wearing masks, I'm happy to, of course, happy to do it in person. But until that time, I found it difficult to hear one another, difficult to express myself. So I, for that reason, I would like to stay on Zoom. Okay, Greta. I prefer in person, but that being said, I don't want um, anybody to be uncomfortable yeah. with that. So then, then let's leave it as Zoom for now. Yes, agreed. For November, can we revisit it then for December? Absolutely. Because uh, my um, preference for what it's worth is that I would say that I, I would concur with uh, Greta that I, I think it's it, it's more efficient or something works better with it, but I, I think that no one should be uncomfortable and I think it's it's certainly a wise move to put it off for a month. It doesn't hurt. No, no. So yeah. we've agreed it's going to yeah. be on Zoom okay. next month. Great. Okay, right. next question. What time? Do we want to do it at 7 when it's Zoom or do we want to do it at 7.30 when it's Zoom? Um, <laughs> Since I don't think it makes any difference to when we end, I would say eight o'clock would be a great time. <laughs> but seven, my vote would be seven thirty. But I'll defer to anybody else. I don't care. I like seven thirty as well. Yeah. I prefer. It. Yes, that's fine. Seven thirty is fine with me. I'm sorry. Seven thirty is fine with me. Greta, are you okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the November meeting will be seven thirty on Zoom. Okay. Okay, now go, now let's go to the closed <laughs> applications. Now you wanted to take- We already started discussing Smashburger, just to let you know. We, we okay. were, had some comments on it. Okay. Oh yeah. That, um, we had jumped to one that seemed to be a little bit more standard in its approach in our, we didn't have a lot of discussion about this application. Um, the I comments had no that comments. I had made- I, I, have, I had no comments. So on the Smashburger, I thought the renewal is fine, so. Um, I don't know what anyone. The comment that I had made and that that Rob was helping us with was simply, um, I am inclined to approve this um, this uh, ex, you know renewal of the special permit as well. Um, I was just asking if we could change to a co-defined term rather than the undefined term, which is a fast casual restaurant. We don't have our code and we don't have a need to give a special permit to a fast casual restaurant because there's no standards. So I, that's why I had asked the um, business operator or the applicant before us last time about his operations. And I was suggesting that we change it to carry out restaurant. And Rob had suggested that it's it, it, trying to change it to a code, that, a term that's found in the village code. Right. And as oh. May pointed out, we, we can note in the resolution that the change is being made just for consistency with the code, not to reflect a substantive change in operations. Okay, does a restaurant carry out need the same special permit? Does the same provision apply if we call it a restaurant carry out? I don't have a problem with changing the name, but do the same provisions apply or how does it word it in the section that deals with special permit? Good question. We'll pull up the use chart.
Well, I don't want to hold everyone up here as I look for this. Oh, um, would it be acceptable to say we will make that change provided, uh, Robin, that the use the um, special use permits requirements are the same for this use? Yeah, it's real. There's only one special permit requirement. The question is, is a special permit required? What are the provisions regarding special permit with respect to um, um, uh, carry out? How is it worded? If there's either no special permit required or it's the okay. same because we only have one in the village. I just don't have the section number in front of me. So does anyone have the section number in no, front of me? Nor them? do I. I'm, I'm trying to pull it up. Meg, do you? No, I don't. I'm looking. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry, I thought you might. Um, okay, wait, special, yes. Okay, so assuming it, but, okay. The other thing I'd say is if we call this a restaurant carryout, then it's very difficult to distinguish a restaurant fast food from a restaurant carryout. And every fast food restaurant could be conceived of as a fast as a restaurant carryout. So I think we have to be careful of how we're doing this. Um, if you look at- I, the I had made the point, Rob had asked, did I, would I consider fast food? And if I had, and I made the distinction that it was generally prepackaged containers or wrappers, I would say, generally meaning the most everything is in prepackaged containers and definitely um, Smashburger cooks to order. It's not prepackaged food. I think that that's a salient point for fast food. So I'm not sure that everything, I think that is a very a big distinction between the carry out and the fast food. Also the restaurant carry out does also include a space where you can sit and eat at the table. That needs to be a component of it. Um, I don't think that's a component in the restaurant fast food. So I think that there is a there are marked differences between the two. And I, we all have gone many times we've commented that these definitions are could definitely use some clarity and some updating. But I don't think there, there's uh, and, and um, no doubt, Robin, at some point, there'll be something that hits right in the middle. But I don't think it's a prevalent problem. Um, I, you know, I'm happy to give it a, a defined term, and, and I honestly don't, you know, and it's a good suggestion to make it a defined term. I'm not opposed to that. I just want to make sure that whatever term we give it doesn't then come back to bite us for something else. Because if you ask me, when I go to Burger King, at least the last time I went to Burger King, which was probably 15 years ago, I also made a custom order. I make a custom order wherever I'm going, and it was made to the way I wanted it. So um, yeah, I, don't I think it's different. It generally like, or proportionally what the sales are, that seems to be what these definitions are getting at, okay. um, what defined terms. Not okay. that there isn't a possibility that you could, there's a possibility that somebody would come to your table and take your order and do it for order and send it, but if you're off, that doesn't you know change you from being a fast food restaurant. I have no problem. I just raised those two cautions of what does the special permit provision say and will this come back to be a problem for us in the future? Well, I, 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 I'd like to read just one thing from the definition of fast food restaurant. Um, and it, it says a facility where most or all the sales to the public are stand up services. So that's not smash burger. Well, I don't know, Brenda, because if for the preponderance is takeout, that's standing up because you just stand up, you get it, and then you take it out or you call it in and you're just standing up. And we're saying that the majority of sales are stand up. Well, you know, it says fast food is not a carry out restaurant or right. no contestant. And I will just go back to the, the very beginning sentence. This is generally served in prepackaged containers or wrappers. And prepackaged would mean that the food has already been made and it's prepackaged. You can't prepackage. I don't think they're talking about this raw ingredients being prepackaged. If you have to then cook it and then wrap it up, that's the distinction between something that is prepackaged. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't know that any fast food restaurant, and I don't go to, haven't been, I mean, I don't go to that many, so I can't answer. I have not been to that many. Um, and I'm thinking of something like McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's or one of those where you order what you want and then they wrap it up. So that's why I'm not so sure how that distinction applies. But 
I'm okay with leaving this with if we can, um, if we're okay with, as long as the special permit provision applies. Do they have a, a drive-in window? No. No. Okay. It's, it's on, no, it's on the main street. It's not drive-in. So, and their general commercial district? Yes. yes. So uh, principal permitted uses include restaurants, which is subject to 342-45, and the uses subject to the approval procedures set forth in Article 10, which are the um, special use permit. Well, 342-45 are the list. I'm sorry? Um, if we call it a fast food restaurant carry out re or carry out restaurant, do we have to make that determination about the 200 linear feet? Is there something else? Yes, because right next door is the um, uh, that ice cream, that frozen yogurt place. So it is closer than 200 feet. If we're going to call it a carry out or fast food, then we have to deal with the 200 feet. I thought that the proximity only was about fast food, not about carry out restaurants. No fast food restaurant, yes. carry out yeah. restaurant, or delicatessen shall be permitted on Mamaroneck Avenue closer than 200 linear feet to another existing fast food restaurant, carry out restaurant, or delicatessen on the same side of the avenue. Yes. And, and they, um, this is a renewal on their last special permit. Did we, did we um, give them the, the proximity? We didn't discuss it. Didn't didn't have the time at the time they didn't have the other businesses there because well, we didn't call it a fast food or carry out last time therefore it didn't need the 200 feet distance well and so so last time we really didn't we fudged it. it yeah we fudged it um i i, I don't think the applicant should suffer because we didn't deal with the issue no, I don't think so either, but if we're going to do something now to make it more in line with the code, then we have to make it, we have to carry that through and do everything else more in line with the code is all I'm saying. Okay. So if you want to call it fast food, I mean, sorry, if you want to call it carry out, then we need to make that determination, um, which would be a variance is the problem. You need a variance for that because it's not a special permit. Well, they're, they're existing, so... It's a special, and, and it is a special. Yeah. yeah, I don't see how you could not renew because a new building came, a business came in and built next to you after you were already there for three years that you're going to now say, I'm not going to renew it because you're too close to somebody else. That just doesn't, you're the pre-existing thing. But they weren't pre-existing, weren't they built at the same time as the um, ice cream place next door? I don't know which opened first. I believe the Smashburger opened first. I'm absolutely certain. I, I know it didn't, it didn't open second. It, it was there for a while. I think it was open before that the the uh, frozen yogurt place opened. Um, then the frozen. Um, what, what we can do is um, um, mock up a, a resolution, think through what the potential unintended consequences might be, right. uh, determine if any variance relief if any might be necessary and present that to the board and you can okay. determine if, if you want to make a change or not. That sounds well, like yeah. a good idea. Yeah, Rob, one of the options is to simply renew it as is, right? I'm okay with renewing it as is. As, and know. the problem that, that Meg keep points out, which is correct, is something we need to deal with, but really the trustees need to deal with it. So. <sighs> Hold my breath. Why we are giving a special permit to something that's not listed needs a special permit? Sounds like if you're going to make up a, you know have a business, just just go for it. If it's not something that's listed in the in the code, why would we be giving a special permit to something that doesn't say in the code you need a special permit for that? Yeah. Yeah. I I don't I don't like to fudge. You know I like to be precise. Uh, yeah. I, I think I certainly think if the yogurt the yogurt store came second, then then Smashburger doesn't really need a variance because it's the yogurt store that came second. I, I think that's right, but we I don't know if the 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 uh, yogurt store came second. I don't think any of us is certain, even if some of us think that might be true. Yes, but we could we could find out and. So we could, we could, you know, the next month. Uh, I think, 
I think the, but the hearing was closed, so we, that information is not in the record. I think the appropriate thing is, Rob, to figure out and uh, take up your suggestion and figure out what the implications are and figure out a solution. But right. if it's going to be very complicated or there's a problematic, then maybe we have the fallback is as is, right? Just an extension. But at, at the end of the you day, memorialize the erroneous aspect of it. <laughs> at, at, at the end of the day, all, all restaurants are food service establishments and have to comply with Article 10 special permits. So um, and hopefully by next meeting, we can find out whether or not it was existing prior to the other ice cream store opening up, whether it came first or not. Yeah. OK. Um, so Rob, you'll draft something. We'll think about all. You'll think about all the implications, and we'll go from there. Sounds good. Okay. Um, next item is five hundred four. The park. Want to go back to the top of the list? You, you oh, right. You didn't do ten forty. I don't know. I, yeah, oh. I, I sorry. I didn't realize. Remember, you took oh. it out of order. Okay. Let's do chopped. I have a lot of comments on the draft application. I mean, the draft resolution, a lot of comments. So um, could be, before we get into the resolution itself, could we have a sense of, of where we are? Because I was surprised to get that resolution before we had been able to deliberate or discuss. As was I, as was I, which is one of the reasons I had so many comments. So if, if we could take the resolution away and we could have a discussion of the board first. Thank you very much, thanks. I would like to know, um, I have made, raised the point during the public hearing last time that um, I am holding that this is a carryout restaurant and not a restaurant. As a carryout restaurant, it is um, we it is not permitted to um, have the car service, and so that would definitely change uh, some aspects of the resolution that we should end up with. So um, I think first maybe could we tackle. Uh, that decision as to whether this is a restaurant as it is claiming to be, as the applicant is naming itself, or is it a carryout restaurant? Because that has a lot of implication as to where we're gonna go with the resolution. Um, I think they made a case for the fact that this will not be like other chopped and they will have more in restaurant, in, in house, in restaurant, with inside, uh, eating than most chopped do. And therefore, based on that, I am perfectly fine with considering it a restaurant. If we are considering, if, if we wanted to call it a fast food or fast casual or carry out whatever it is you're suggesting, we are saying to them, we don't believe you, even though we don't have any evidences to not, we're just discussing it with them. And a carry out restaurant is since just we just made the distinction of why Smash Burger was a carryout, um, it's fairly different from Smash. I mean, I don't know, maybe a business enterprise primarily engaged in the retail sale of food or beverages. All food or beverages are sold at retail, so it's a little bit strange, which may include grocery items. They don't have grocery items for consumption off the premises, and they are saying that this chopped will be operated in a way in which the food is going to be primarily sold for consumption on the premises, or though there will also be consumption off the premises. Um, so I don't know. Anyway, well, that's I, we asked, I'm perfectly we asked, happy with considering right. a restaurant based on um, the way they say they ex want it to operate. They hope that this will operate. Well, as I said, I said, I said, I'm sorry, I'll just finish up Greta really quick. And the last public hearing that we we had when we were, uh, I, I made the point in the last public hearing that in the hearing before, we specifically asked, what were the percentage of operations were they expecting, were they anticipating? How much would be eaten? They said about a third. So that's from the applicant. Yes, I, I guess it's different from CHOP. That, that's sort of a very vague um, analogy. We don't even know what other CHOPs do, but said two thirds would be takeaway, one third would be eaten. Right there, we have, if we're going to believe what the applicant has presented to us, 
that is the proof that is majorly a takeout restaurant and not eat in service. Eat it, you know, order there and eat in. Sorry, Greta, I jumped on your comment. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree with Meg. Um, primarily it is a takeout. You know, you, they, they admitted that. Um, you have to judge takeout by, by revenue, their revenue, and their revenue is coming from takeout. So um, I, um, and in terms of what they hope the restaurant will be in terms of being more of a sit-in, that's totally speculative. They provided no, no evidence to suggest that really that was going to be the case. And even if they got their, their best projections as a sit-in restaurant, it's still one third sit-in. So I, I, I really don't see how they've met the definition of, of a restaurant. Dave, do you have any thoughts? Uh, one, uh, an unrelated one, less complicated one. There's a reference when I read this, um, which wasn't, this was earlier, to they're not being able to utilize the, um, <clears throat> the counter, the outside opening. You're, you know what I'm referring to? Let me find the, it. The drive up, the car service right, window. Right. I, I would just like somewhere in there indicating that they have not, and that they have not asked for a variance from that because they never did. And I had once discussed this with Charlie because the issue would come up, is it an area or a use variance? And based on the code, it's based upon state law, it's a dimensional issue, a physical issue, not a use issue, but I don't really care, but they never, I mean, it didn't come up because I don't think they ever asked for one. What do they need a variance for? Well, they if they wanted the plans, to. They besides the, the yards, of course, I'm not talking about the yards, but you're talking about something else. Yes, I believe that in here, and I, don't, I can't put my finger on this minute, they had indicated there was a big discussion, can they use the outside service? Can they open that? There's a, an opening there, right? In their new plan, they were not asking to be able to use right. transactions through that window. That's correct. I just, I just don't, I just don't want it to be. A, there's an implication that they cannot do that. We have no rights to that. We have a right. I believe it's an area of variance issue, but they've not asked for it. Right. And, if, and I just wanted that indicated that they hadn't asked for it because. Um, well I'm not sure, David, they didn't ask for it. They said they're not going to use the window. They're just going to use where that is as a sort of a door. And they're going to go through their car service from that area. I'm not sure why we need to say they didn't ask for something they didn't ask for. They didn't ask for lots of things. Well, didn't we discuss, I, I, I guess if you could maybe, uh, let me just look at this app, the proposed resolution. But I thought there was a place that said they couldn't use it um, <coughs> as a condition. I have put it in my notes on the earlier one, but I don't seem to have it. Um, and condition number one, the applicant shall not operate drive-through service or counter drive-through service on the premises. But they didn't ask for count for drive-through. Right. So. Okay. The applicant shall not. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I would have put down as no app, no and, and no application to for variance was granted. I think that they were under the impression that they had to get a use variance. No, they didn't apply for, but they didn't. No, I know, but they talked when they talked about it. I understand what you're saying. All right. I mean, I can live with it this way. I, I have just to go back to the, the, the point of the distinction. Are we going to write a resolution for if we are so inclined to approve it or tonight? Are we writing it as a restaurant or as a carryout restaurant? Because that directly will result in whether or not we're discussing car service at all or not. So that's why I thought before we get too far down the road, if we yeah. could make that distinction. So Dave, how do you come out on the on the question of whether it's carry out restaurant or a regular traditional sit down restaurant or which term it meets? I gotta think about that one. I've never quite, it, this is about, I just gotta say from my standpoint, this is a moving target application. I've never quite, you know, it's sort of like what, Meg, you're saying it should be, it, it does not fit, it, it's a takeout, is that right? 
that there's a carryout because they describe their operations as being two thirds takeaway. They anticipate two thirds will be takeaway and one third will be that you're, they're going, someone's gonna come up, order there and then sit at the, at the table and someone will deliver their meal to them. That will be a third of their business and two thirds of their business will be some form of uh, people ordering to just take away and eat, right. and consume off the premises. Well, then it sounds to me like it's probably more of a takeaway restaurant takeout, right? It's yeah, I think it's carry out. This is the carry out. I mean, I think that's that's you're right. That's what they say. I think they said both. I think the last prior to the last <laughs> meeting, they had been less specific about how much they thought was going to be. I got the impression that more was going to be sit down than they did say at the last meeting. My, I, I am very concerned about, um, you know, leaving aside, there were lots of problems with this application, but I'm sort of concerned about the fact that we proceeded down a certain path with their application, didn't suggest to them at any point during their application that maybe this wasn't a restaurant, that this was a carryout restaurant, and therefore we wouldn't give them the car service. And, um, I, I, you know, we can decide that it's not a carry out. And I don't know that I disagree that it's, I think it's a, one of another one of these, every one of these restaurants is a little different, but the way that these things happen, which is that we ha hear, have a hearing and then we discuss it. And in the discussion, we raise something that was not at all pointed out, discussed or raised. Do we really during the- I remember distinctly- It just that. seems to me a I little bit- too problematic. Well, I distinctly remember, I definitely raised it in the last public hearing because you you took me to task that I was wrong. So I, I kind of a little sensitive about that. I absolutely do remember that I did review that. And I believe that Greta was actually, Greta, you'll have to speak for yourself, but was also raising the point that she was asking the proportionality um, and, and asking for the operations. So I, I disagree. And that's why I purposely raised it and, and was trying to have a discussion with them about these two terms. So I for sure was discussing that in the public hearing and gave them the chance. We, we think we're thinking about this resolution as taking like a year. This particular last design that they gave us had before us maybe three times. So we, we can't, Yes, we were going down a different path. We were, they were not calling themselves a restaurant originally. Then they were a restaurant, but they were gonna have a window. And then, and we closed one application and then they came back. So it isn't as though we've had a lot of discussion and never talked about the difference. It's actually out of the last three, I think that Greta raised some points and then definitely the last hearing that we had, um, I definitely was very, I said that I um, was asking them why they're not a carry out and that I felt that they were a carry out. Yeah, I, I think at least two or three months ago, I asked questions about the yeah. anticipated proportionality of takeout versus sit-in. And then I asked, followed it up. And then the last session, Meg more explicitly said, and they kept repeating it, you know, at no point in my recollection, did they ever indicate that um, they were even at a 50% Mark, it was always going to be a major. A majority was always going to be takeout, but it was then at the last session that Meg was quite explicit yes. in saying, "Yeah, you've been saying this all along. You don't meet the definition of a restaurant." So I think okay. they certainly have. They had notice that these were um, questions being asked. We were concerned, and then Meg was explicit about why it was important. There's no question that at the last meeting, Meg asked the question and they were very clear that a third um, was. Before that last meeting, it was. I actually, before that last meeting, I was, as I said, I was under the impression and I was very surprised when they said only a third because I'd gotten the impression all along that they were trying to change this from, you know, primarily take out to primarily sit in and that's how they were setting this up. So um, perhaps one option would be to. Perhaps one option would be to approve it as a restaurant, but make clear that it's approved on the condition that it meets the definition of a restaurant and a restaurant only, and that its primary purpose is not carry out. So that you're in a sense conditioning it to be a restaurant as opposed to a carry out restaurant. The problem, well, I think that's a good idea, Rob, but here's the problem. Um, 
we are still in the pandemic and many, many restaurants are still having primarily takeout. I mean, you know, you go to any, a lot of restaurants and they're not gonna be full inside, you know, the, you know a certain percentage of, of the service is going to be takeout. Um, as a practical matter. And so I think it would be very hard to, 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 to measure it um, for, at some point. Uh, I, I, you know, otherwise I think it's a good idea. And, and Meg may be right that this is a um, carryout restaurant um, based you know, on what they said at the last meeting. We could approve it as a carryout. And then if they can prove to us at some point that actually that we're wrong, that their business is primarily a sit-in, then they can come back and say, and amend it. Proof. All right, that's it evolves. If it's after the pandemic, it evolves. And that's a good idea, Greta. I think you had, that's a good suggestion. And the basis for that decision would be that they said to us, one third is going to be eat-in and two thirds are going to be take out in some form. Right, so I don't. So we're going to say it's a carry out, but they can come back at some point when there's they have. I think, I think the resolution should explain that while they have applied for a restaurant with car service based on the information provided at the uh, hearings, there's only they they only anticipate one third of the. Um, of the food being so, or the, the, the food, um, that, that only one third will be done inside the restaurant at a table or counter, um, which makes the principal use not restaurant use, but carry out use. And therefore based on that, they can't have the car. Now, one third will be served to them at a table. It's not just, you got a paper bag and then you went over and sat down as opposed to be, it has yeah. Waiter. Seated at a table, seated at a table, served by a waiter or wait waitress, and consumed on the premises. That has to be beyond beyond fifty percent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to make it subject to their ability to come in and change that if you change it? I don't think we need to say that. I think if we lay it out, the reason we're doing it this way, and they're probably listening to us right now, um, I don't think we need to say they can always come in and change it if, in fact in a year or two years, they discover that in fact, they're mostly, that they're getting a lot of people in, they can come in and tell us that. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to make the, 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 because we're not making it conditional. It's not like we're saying you automatically get it. Are we? I think we're saying they have to come back to us. Right. If they have to come back to us, I don't even think we need to say in the resolution that they do. Well, the only thing is, if you're if you're going to give them permission to come back, um, otherwise somebody could say, "Well, why are you coming back? You've already got this, and you know we're not going to consider it." I don't. know. It's up to you. So then we can no, say we in the resolution after we explain what the problem is, we can say because of the evidence they presented, and if they have at any time any evidence that they are in fact a restaurant with uh, most of the food and beverages being consumed at a table and served by a waiter or waitress, then they would be right. entitled to the car service or they would be entitled to ask for the car service. Mm -hmm. So perhaps as with the last application, we'll do a draft resolution, circulate it, you can talk about it, no decision will be made tonight. Once we agree on the resolution, you can vote on the resolution. Are we okay on timing on this? The hearing, the public hearing was closed on, was it closed? Hold on, I have my count. My I know that there was a plea from the applicant that we do this. Yeah. We don't delay, that we heard quite a bit about that they didn't want to delay. Um, the public hearing was closed, I believe, at the last meeting. So timing is not an issue, um, but it, I know that they were very concerned because they wanted to open. Um, so if we vote, I think we can take a, um, I, I rather than take a vote on an actual resolution that we don't have, I would rather take a straw poll now on what it is so the applicant knows how we're 
pretty almost certainly going to vote and with and then we actually vote on it at the next yeah, meeting I, I just want to stress that the actual decision would not be tonight correct um, yeah um but at least he would know how we were leaning so um i would say that uh, can we have a vote on i'm going to propose again this is not a, a vote within a second but i'm going to propose that we vote on to approve it as a uh restaurant carry out based on the evidence they've given us and recognizing that if more of the restaurant is in fact a table waitress waiter service they can come and get their car service and that we're approving the variances they've requested yeah, so we're, we're approving so that we are we would approve a special permit as a carry out restaurant and not approve the car service let's make that clear right and then but we are so approving the variances. Evolve, evolve but we're also approving the variances because that's a they right. keep it there. approve the variance. I also, I had raised something. I'll just raise it. I had raised something in an earlier application, an earlier version of this application. Um, not lately. So let me just share with you my concern, and perhaps there's nothing to be done. But uh, originally we were given a site plan that showed the something that they were going to utilize the freestanding sign that's in the front of the lot that was left over from the bank. Um, I did raise that, that I don't think that that's zoning compliant and that in the materials that they had provided, there was definitely a sign permit, but no variance had been approved for this. Um, and now when this new one, we're not getting a complete sign. We don't see the sign. They don't, they're just not giving us an views, elevations, and putting the sign in there. I don't know whether they intend to utilize that sign. Um, but if they want to utilize that sign, I can quote the code here why I believe that they would need a variance in order to be able now, to. I, they're not here for a ver for a sign variance. We're not approving any sign here yeah, there's no we are approving there. the site plan for the restaurant so i'm not sure why we need to say anything about the sign they will have to get the sign approved by the building inspector and either he will find it compliant or he will find it non-compliant but is it I'm on the sure. is it on the site plan is it on the site plan it was on the original site plan but it's not on the current site plan is it and we're proving it based on the current site it's plan. not it not is or not they're just not adding that part <laughs> any of the elevations that I got. So I will just cite 286-11B freestanding signs um, as, as those are the regulations as to why uh, someone is permitted a freestanding sign if the building department is listed. I don't think it's relevant and I don't think we should discuss it. It's not on the site. The, the site plans that we have most recently been given, we're not approving it. and will be up when and if the, they do want to use it, it'll be up to the village and building inspector to determine whether the freestand, they can use the freestanding sign or not. I had originally brought it up when it truly was in front of us and we were looking at, they gave us all the sign information that was all in the packet that we had. Okay. Okay, so again, going back to what I was suggesting, which is a straw poll to approve it as a fast casual based on the evidence that they provide. I'm sorry, a, ca a restaurant carry out, sorry, I, um, based on the evidence they provided and the definitions, and that's how we would approve it, and therefore they couldn't have car service. I think um, Rob's, is, is restaurant comma carry out? And yeah, Rob, that's what is in the code. That's, yeah, I mean, I think that's just for alphabetical. Carry out restaurant. I think, I think we can. Say, I think we can say thing. carry out restaurant. Um, okay. Uh, uh, what is everyone? Meg. Yeah. David, you're saying yes. I would approve a special permit for it as a fat, as a uh, carry out restaurant. Um, deny the car service as a result because it's not permitted as a carry out restaurant. And yes, uh, the language that if they come back and they evolve their services and it becomes more than 50% um, of their businesses is as a restaurant, they could come back and ask to, to review for the car service. Well, and we're approving the variances, which is also, you're always we are also approving, approving the variances. Approving the they have variance. they need three variances. So we're approving yes, the variances. I, I would vote in favor of that. Yes. Okay, Greta? Yeah. And David? Yes. Okay. so. We have a straw poll so the applicant can see pretty much how we are intending to vote on the application. 
and Rob, if you would draft a um, Okay, next application. So we've done, uh, the next one would be 504, the Parkway. So I have to recuse Robin. Thank yes, that, you. That, 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 <laughs> I thought the next. I thought, please remember. Thank you, Robin. I thought the next one is SB twenty twenty three oh eight Mamaroneck Avenue. Am I wrong? You are wrong. Oh, I'm looking. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, I have I have notes on my app. I have notes on my agenda, um, and uh, they they have this taken because I got confused by how you started it. So you are right, and I am wrong. It is the next one is. Um, 11 SP 2020 308 Mamaroneck Avenue. Which is? Which is um, Barkila. Oh. Um, and what does everyone think? Am I missing? Do we have that resolution on that one? No. No, this was the one, uh, if you recall, there was some uh, case law discussion uh, relative to whether or not it was legitimate to regulate hours of operation. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think the, the consensus was that it is. The, the board cannot regulate hours of operation just for the sake of regulating hours of operation as a business, yeah. but it can to the extent that there are potential land use implications and impacts, yeah. uh, provided there's evidence demonstrating the fact that there could be an impact uh, based on the hours uh, of operation. I have, to, to me, um, we talked about the hours because that's what they wanted to do. And they wanted to go, um, so they, the applicant seek an amendment to extend the hours 10.30 a.m. to 10.30, Monday through Thursday to 10 o'clock p.m., Friday and to 11, at Friday and Saturday to 11.30. I thought he wanted to go much later than that. I think those are his current hours. And if you look at the what I'm reading here on the agenda. It's oh, right, to 10, 2 a.m. I think 2 a.m. we discuss is much later than any other restaurant is allowed on Mamaroneck Avenue. And I am not in favor of it. And I would make the hours based on the fact that there are residents, even if there's no resident immediately above this, there are nearby residents and I would not. And I think that the impact on Mamaroneck Avenue or on the residents is, um, is potentially not. Do we have some information as to the, the relative location of those residents? Yeah, they're, they're throughout the village. The residents above everything on the Maranek Avenue. Yeah, and it, it's a, the whole village. It would change the character of the neighborhood if you had every because if, if they can be till two a.m., everybody can be, and all the residents will be deeply uh, impacted by that. So um, I'm yeah. I think these hours are too late. I think we can make them later and make them more consistent with what other restaurants are on. Mamaroneck Avenue, but 2 a.m. is much later than um, other restaurants are. I would suggest 1 a.m. for the weekend hours, for sure. Um, what was it up, to, what's it been up to now? 11.30 p.m. What other um, restaurants in the area are um, have hours up to 1 a.m.? Is that cons is that consistent with um, the surrounding food establishments? That's what I was trying to remember. I don't remember what others have. Um, Sal's, which is the closest, is open, I think, till midnight when they're oh, in their normal course, not till later, but that's not a regular restaurant. Recently, that what about yeah. the, the Italian restaurant um, across the street, way up on the avenue towards the Boston Post Road? Um, we did a lot with the hours on that one. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. Do you remember what they are? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to remember, and I don't. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can find any in my notes. Probably a good idea. You know what? We should probably get a database where you have the an aerial and you you know the times and everything because that they're right. That's that's a really yeah. That would be a really good. I, idea. I say if if something is already operating until twelve. And this business owner has come to us and said it, it needs to stay open in terms of the viability of his business, the, hit, the success of his business. I don't think that one o'clock is that much later. It's going to really tremendously change the character of the avenue if this one goes till 1 a.m. Um, on both. He's operating till 11. I would, excuse now. me, if I just. 
but I would add a condition um, that the doors and windows be closed at say um, 11.30 or we pick a time. And I know that the applicant was fine with that so that the noise is basically confined to inside. Um, and so it's not impacting. Problem is if you go to one o'clock, you're gonna be effectively doing 1.30 by the time they close up. Um, but remember what we're saying is we have, there's two, the question is, when we decide those hours, what is it we're saying that hours mean? Is that the hours that we're saying that all the customers, I think what we're saying is customers have to be out of the restaurant at that time. And if that's what we're saying, then I think one o'clock is probably, might be okay. But I noticed that um, Station Plaza, just as um, only is open till 1130. I, that's a, I'm just looking at resolutions that I found. Yeah. I can't necessarily find every resolution, but here's some resolutions I have on my um, computer, which is all I'm doing is I'm looking to see what I could find. Um, and if you're looking, um, I, so that, so I found Station Plaza and that is till 1130. Um, so looking, and so I'm looking at other, I'm just looking at it to see if I see anything else. So I don't have everything on my computer. Um, I was going to say, I was, I feel very uncomfortable this owner that he can't have people in his space um, who can be there, who can't be there. I can see that we can say, we don't want you to encourage more business transactions or that you have business transactions. Um, the fact that, um, that you're gonna chase out your customers is a terrible thing to do to a business owner running a restaurant. I feel very uncomfortable. I don't think we are supposed to be telling uh, you know, it has to have an environmental impact. Um, no, it doesn't. I feel like that is it's it. That's an overreach to tell someone that you have to. You'll get fined, or you will be in violation if you didn't kick your customers out. Um, I have I have a real problem with that. Well, that's um, yeah. Nona Corolla. I found I have a resolution, but I'm okay. not sure if it's a draft or the adopted resolution. In fact, it has to be a draft, but it says 11 p.m. as well. Yeah. So um, I think one, based on looking at those, and again, I know that Station Plaza is correct. I don't know what Nona Corolla is, but uh, I think that 1 a.m. is, uh, no, I would not be happy with allowing people, with uh, doing anything other. If we're going to say 1 a.m., it has to be, everybody has to be out of the restaurant. Um, and they yeah. can easily make sure that people are out of the restaurant by, for example, deciding that they're not going to continue, they're going to close their kitchen at 11.30 or 12. We're not telling them what time. And based on the fact that they close their kitchen and their bar at 11.30 or 12, people aren't going to sit around for two hours. People will eventually leave. So we either have to tell them what time they have to close their kitchen, which doesn't guarantee, or, and or we have to tell them what time customers have to be out. But we do need to tell them one of those things. My, I would suggest consideration of, if you think at one o'clock and they don't close on time, by the time anybody really knows it's 1.15, 1.30. So I would rather say 12.30 and they have to close by one. That way you've got momentum in that. If they're starting to serve at quarter to one, people are going to be able to call someone, I guess. But I'd say if you want them to close at one, then tell them 12.30 and they have to close at one. Well, well, then what happens at 12.30, David? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Stop, I guess the kitchen stop. you stop serving. No, no, if, if we're going to tell them one o'clock, kitchen has to stop at midnight. Oh, well, As I a practical matter, the kitchen has to stop at midnight because people, right, if I, I, I go agree, in at a quarter to- Well, if you, yeah. Isn't, isn't, aren't we really interfering with the- Yes. I'm sorry, if I could just finish. Operations of the business. If, if you say, we don't want people in the space, we want them all to have gone home for the environmental impact by a certain time, don't we leave it up to the applicant as to when he stops to tell the applicant that when he has to stop selling, you know, kitchen closes. Or, I would think it's in his interest if he wants to comply and everybody's supposed to leave by one, he should figure it out or she should figure it out, whoever the applicant is. But for us, it seems intrusive or I didn't think that was that was beyond our, our 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 powers to do is to actually say this is when unless it's the village has decided it comprehensively for 
for all, for us to, to, to tell this group, you have to stop your kitchen at this hour or the bar at this hour. I don't understand the environmental impact that we would justify that your kitchen can't go beyond 12. We're thinking it means so that you'll get out by one, but don't. Uh, it, it's um, appropriate to regulate willing. the use of land to avoid a particular impact. Right. And yeah, we don't have, we're not deciding that there's an environmental impact per se. What we're saying is there is an impact on the community. I would not like the restaurant to be told any later than 1230. I think 1230 is late enough, given what I'm dis I've discovered from other nearby restaurants, because based on what I'm discovering, that means every other restaurant is going to come back and ask to be there till 1230. And there's a lot of restaurants on the Maranek Avenue. So, um, I'm, I'm not so sure on, on that, that, that definitely we could have more late closing restaurants. I understand that. But all of the other ones have, we've never had to reduce their hours. That's just what they came in. That's just what they wanted. They wanted 11 o'clock. They were more. No, no we've got Molly Spillane's and others. We've reduced we reduced lots of hours. My time on the board, the, I know Nona Carolla, they didn't ask for later. And then we, we curbed the hours. Uh, you know, so that's in my, I'm sorry. So I should. I should um, qualify that as the years that I've been on the board. I, I can't remember on the Maranek Avenue that somebody asked for a late time and then we, we told them they couldn't stay open as late as they wanted. Yeah, we've had uh, interior it, of their, it, the interior of their operations. I know there's been many applications that we told they had to close earlier on the Maranek okay. Avenue. Um, I would and like if to, we're going to make the Maranek Avenue so people are open till one, the whole street, you've effectively affected all the residentials, the residents. Yeah. That's a big step. I mean, it's not like, and it's a huge jump because what are they up to now? They're 11 now? But you told me Sal's is open till 12. So we have a business. What's, what's this open till now? 11 or 11.30. Right. So I would be comfortable with 12.30, but, and then. I'm okay with 12.30. But the doors closed by one. Because I think the realistic part is you have to stage it because they're human beings and they're out there because everybody you can stay open late at night. I think this way they know that I'm sorry, we're closed, but you can stay for another half an hour. That's a lot more friendly than it is saying, okay, no food and you're up. And I, I hear what you say, Robin, about closing the kitchen at 12, but I don't know. That's sort I'm of mini management. I would say that they have to be closed at 1230. Um, that customer service, what we've said, the way we've worded it, and here's the language from Nona Carolla. I'll read you the language. Um, that the windows and doors must be closed no later than 10 p.m. on Sundays through Thursdays. Oh, wait, that's not it. That the restaurant's hours of operation for customer service shall be no later than 10 p.m. on Sunday through Thursday and no later than 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. That is the hours on for Nona Corolla. And that's the language that the restaurant's hours of operation for customer service. That's the language that we've used. So I think given that that is the language you use, and I think that's the same language we have on, um, and Wait. that was granted Meg while you were on the board. And the reason Nona Corolla didn't come for longer hours is because we had significantly reduced the Molly Spillane came in with one time, we reduced it, then we reduced it a second time because of the noise and the impact on the avenue. So Nona Corolla, so the hours of operation for customer service. So I think that's the language we should use and I would not be willing to do it past 1130. And I'm just letting you know that I am about, on Friday and Saturday, not on Sunday through Thursday. Um, so what would you... Can you help me? I'm, I'm sorry, 11.30 for which, which, I said 12 hours of operation for customer service shall be no later than whatever time they want to begin through 12.30 on Friday and Saturday nights. And That's the latest I would be. The other night. And what about the other nights? Uh, well, again, based on others, I think that, um, I think 11 o'clock is as late. We've, everything else on weekdays, we've made 10 o'clock. I don't see why we should not make it 10 o'clock here. I, I really have a problem with opening the restaurants later. We have a lot of residents on Mamaroneck Avenue. And again, other restaurants on Mamaroneck Avenue have been limited, much more limited. And one has to assume that that will change. 
If Excuse me. I'm, just, I'm, I'm here. I'm just going off video for just a moment. I'm, I'm here. I just have to make an adjustment. All right. So anyway, that's my thoughts. 1230 are okay on Friday and Saturday. Recognize for cust hours of service for, cu hours of have to for customer service. And when do people have to leave by? Well, it says customer service. It means they can't have customer service after. So that means they can't, whatever that means. I don't know what it means, David, if you want to know the truth. I would say that they can't serve anybody anything after 1230, if that's what we're saying, because that's when hours of operation for customer service. Right. And, and the doors have to be closed out. and there has to be no customers in the premises after one, let's say. I'm OK with that. So 1230 is customer service and one o'clock because, you know, people have been drinking, they'll hang out. That's Where, OK with you me. You know, I, I, I agree with you both. Um, but weekends. Yeah. Friday and Saturday. Yeah, I think I think twelve thirty service one o'clock close yeah. is is reasonable. It's um, you don't want to go once we do it for one, we're going to have to do it for everybody else, and that's going to be an environmental impact that can be detrimental. So yeah, I, I don't think of it as an environmental impact. I think of it as a community impact. It's a real problem. Well, but the quality of life is 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 an environmental impact, and yeah. Um, and I, I think that, so now assuming we go with that, what do we want to do for weekdays? I think that the weekday hours at 10 o'clock is what we should leave it at. Do we want to make it a little later? We could, but again, we didn't for anyone else. So I'm not sure why, again, we're treating this one so differently. What do they want that for? What do they want? Restaurant. What Every they, other restaurant would like to be later. Yeah, of course. What do they want though? What, what is their request for the, during the week? A two o'clock every day. Oh, all right. <laughs> Me too. Sunday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. Well, yeah. We can make them earlier in the morning, give them two extra hours. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's not. Um, I would say, you know, I, I think 1030 or something, if you want yeah. to. What do you have now, 10 o'clock of the others? Yeah. And they. this is what they have now, 10 o'clock. If you want to make it 1030, I'm okay with that. I would not be willing to make it later. Okay, well, I'm happy. I, I'd be willing to do 1030 and then... I guess first leave by 11, yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah, 12, that yeah. means everyone else is going to be out. Yes, right. Okay. All right. I'm good with that. All right. So um, I think there are three of us who want to do that. So I'm not sure how Meg feels, but based on that, I think, um, Rob, if you would draft a resolution. Yes. You think we need one drafted for this, Rob? Yeah. Okay. Is that the only change? Can we are we putting any conditions? Is that the only change? I think we have the standard conditions we have for all um, uh, yeah. special uh, permits. And for, and I think we should discuss in the resolution the particular reasons why hours are justified in this instance. Yeah. I think it's on the Maranek Avenue. And Maranek Avenue has a lot of residential use. Um, the noise has been a problem. Um, late late noise late has been a problem for other restaurants and we have limited the hours and we are extending at their request we are giving them slightly longer hours but we are concerned about the impact on the quality of rent there's a lot of residents and we're concerned about the impact of the noise on residential use. the quality of life i think we probably have more residential units on Maranek avenue than we have commercial units Probably do. Yeah, yeah. That's. It. Oh, I will ask you that question. We do. Yeah, there you go. Can, can, I'm sorry. Um, my battery had died, so I was out for just a moment or so until I got my computer charged up. So, um, did, are you? I know you talked about when the kitchen has to close and the hours of operation. You know, when the customers have to leave. Did we discuss closing the doors and windows at some point, like on the weekend? Sure, I, I, that's okay. I think what, what, is, what is the consensus of the board for how late the Friday and Saturday will go? Well, we said 1230 for, for service and then the closing by one. So they, everybody, oh, I, I would say I'm fine with like 1130, the doors and windows have to be closed because to me, that, uh -huh. that you know. Like that's again operating it and be all lit up and the customers are coming in, but doors and windows are closed. So to help them. that again is later than any other restaurant. Yeah, I would say earlier than that, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or you could just go one hour before the same timing. So you could cover it. Yeah. What about during the week? They can. That's not an issue. I don't know that we have any prescription for any other businesses during the week that you're, it's a sort of a 
Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. Does Sal's have to close their window? I mean, everything. Sal's isn't the same thing. It's a very different. I, well, I used it as an example, question. but it's not a good example. I just asked the question, are there other businesses that we, that are yeah. operating until 11 or so during the week and have their windows open? I think there's a lot of them have, I know that there is the um, Asian restaurant that has the doors and windows that are wide open. Very nice that you go in and out. Is there any, do they close at a certain time? Reading the Nona Corolla one, which again is the only one I have, the windows and doors must be closed no later than 10 p.m. on Sundays through Thursdays um, and no later than 11 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. Okay, so we can make the windows and doors close at 10 and to be consistent with that one. Ten on weekdays, eleven on Friday, Saturday. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, that was the only one. It's not that it's the only one there is, but it just happens to be the one that I had. Of it, that that I, was, I, had. I was referring to the Italian restaurant that was up the street on the other side. That was Nona Carolla that I was referring. To. Um. So. Um. Okay, is that good? Are we good? And it will have the, st the standard, the rest of the special permit requirements are our standard special permit requirements that we find for. Right. So this is not a, a straight renewal. This was a, an extension of ours. So are we, this is not renewing it. This is, this is a, Just amending it. Amending the current special permit. Right, so, so the special yeah. permit remains in full force and effect, except that the hours are changed to reflect the new hours. Right. Plus, plus the conditions in terms of closing the doors right. in the hours. Right. Okay. Um, are we good? Okay. Moving on to four four case number seven SP twenty fifteen. Oh no, we did that one. So case number six SP twenty thirteen five zero four the Parkway. Now we, we have a draft. Jefferson Avenue. Did I miss another one? I think oh yeah, I did. <laughs> I keep wanting to my agenda. Trying to keep like no, no, you get it The way my agenda printed out, it just is all. <laughs> I am confusing. You're right. It, I take it back. The next item is uh, case number four a twenty twenty one five thirty nine Jefferson. Which are area variances for the pool? For the pool, right, right, right. That's the one that backs up onto the um, MTA. Yeah, to sort of not, yeah, nothing. Um, so my my two thoughts are: one point nine seven feet from from six to one point nine seven feet is a significant amount, but given that the back of the property is not another house but is MTA property which is not developed there will be nobody living there I don't have a problem with the significant because that is a significant variance with such a significant variance because it will not have an impact on anyone yeah I don't think of it as like a cliff that like, you could build out as far because you're not going to impact anybody on the other side basically. Um, so uh, the only other thing we there was a it was very confusing if you recall because there was a fence which wasn't on the property line which was actually we're not saying anything about any of that we just have to be careful that all we're saying is based on their property um, line um, that's what it is but they were allowing this improvement within that the, the rear yard the rest is to the the building department to make sure it's Yes. Whatever. Well, it's unique. It's a unique property. Right. Not super unique. There's other properties there, I think. There are a lot of other properties who abut on uh, right on the railroad. Mm -hmm. We have a big portion of the village that's on the railroad. Mm -hmm. I guess what's unique is that they they have sort of their fence goes on to property that is MTA property. That makes it unique. Yeah. Um, Right. Anything, anything, any other conditions or anything else? Otherwise, we grant the variance. And so basically, if we go through the findings, it would be that. Um, sorry, just looking at my findings. Normally, I have them open. Um, 
it is that there'll be no significant impact on the neighborhood because there's no residential use behind them. There's no other place to put it given the shape and size of the lot. And as I said already, it is significant, but given that there is no residential or other use behind them except the MTA and its undeveloped property and will not be developed, it is not, um, there will be no impact uh, on anyone else. Madam Chair, this is the yes. assistant building inspector, if I can comment. So with that, you know, that, that area in the back that's, that's not developed currently, you know, we talked about the, st the fence, you've already mentioned it, which is great, thank you. Um, but uh, you know, if they are to develop or use that land, chances are it won't be at that elevation anymore. It will drop down. Um, so somewhere in the writing, uh, we should mention that the pool would have to remain, it can remain as the land is there, but if it gets chewed away and brought down to uh, track level, let's call it, I think it's maybe 15, 20 feet roughly, don't hold me to it. Uh, once that drops down, that pool will no longer be stable if that soil is to be removed. So if they decide, you know what, we wanna, we can't maintain these tracks anymore. We wanna put a high speed track, let's hope one day they do that. Um, but you know they'll they'll probably remove all of that soil and expand the width of the the area. Um, I know there was talk a while back about uh, changing of bridges and so forth, and all that's on hold currently. But you know if uh, you know 20 years now um, that pool's life will still be going strong, and if they decide that they want to add another track and widen that area, extend the bridges, it would be affected. Um, so. You know, in, in the variance, there should be some wording. If, if that is to occur, then the pool should be just demolished or removed. And legal can take care of the wording on that. But, you know, once again, it's not their property. And granting the variance, if they, if they do remove that soil, they have the option to do that once they get the permissions to do that. So um, I, I don't know that we need to say because because I mean, to some degree, that's true for any property. If their house was built further back and and the MTA reduced their assume, you know, assuming they could reduce the do what you suggested they do, you know, could have an impact on somebody's property. So I think that all we need to say in the variance is given the existing conditions um, that, that this variance is granted based on the existing conditions of the property and the MTA property behind and, and solely the conditions that are present. Okay. Yeah, I, think I, I don't want to say it has to be the present conditions. I'm not an expert. This is, we, we rely on the building department, make sure that when they, they give a, a building permit that there's some conditions in there. Um, I don't really understand what is necessary or not necessary. We're doing the zoning impact. So I, I'm not sure why we would, if something becomes unsafe, isn't that the building departments? It's not, that's not, we, we could we could tie the validity of the variance to the existing conditions and that the, the variance itself could go away if those conditions change, which would necessitate then another building department review. But, but to what extent would the conditions, would that mean if they, they put more rocks in or something? What conditions? Well, are it sounds like there's a specific concern about the elevation of the Dennis, right, could you describe that again? The way you what we would understand or know when when is that a problem? Is it two inches? I'm sure it's. I'm I'm glad that the building department is on it and is aware and making everybody all homeowners are safe and that's I that's terrific to have that. I just don't see why that's a part of our zoning application. That, that seems like uh, what condition? Someone could say, "Oh, your variance is gone because." Um, this this sounds to me like it's a particular concern that Dennis has that given the reduced setback, it's going to create the potential for this peril in the future, let's say, if the elevation is adjusted. If I've kept Dennis, that Dennis, I have a question for you. Um, where the 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 six feet to one point nine seven feet is based on the dimensions of actually what they have title to. It doesn't include the piece of land that's in the fenced area that is MTA property. So it, are you concerned because you thought it incurred, included <clears throat> MTA property? So if the MTA property, if the MTA ever did anything on their property, 
the the um, the the, own, the applicant here would still own up to the space that is 1.97 feet beyond right. the pool. Mm -hmm. Under understood, understood. Okay. When so the the current the concern is is if a retaining wall would have to be built, right? There's a lot of what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, and if they you know MTA chooses to remove you know, let's say 10 feet of, of that from back, back in. You know, the, the way that the pool will be structured, that I'm gonna take care of on the building permit end. Um, you know, I'm gonna ask for, you know, thicknesses and so forth, heights, uh, rebar and all of that to make sure we don't have any motion. But, you know, I just wanted to make sure that the board is in a safe place in how you make your determination. That's where I am. It's more about getting the proper wording for the board to be in a better position with the board. I don't think it's but, an issue then because the board is going to grant a variance um, just like it does anything else. And if there's a subsequent change that causes the conditions on which a variance was granted to change, then there's a change. And that doesn't mean they can come back and say, oh, you gave me a variance so I can keep the pool. I don't think there's an issue there. Hmm. But what if the MTA takes <coughs> the land away, but not a significant amount, but we said, uh, but now you're saying, oh, the variance doesn't work because it's relative, like who's gonna decide the certain amount of conditions now have changed that they have lost their right to have the, the to this variance. Um, that's what I'm, it's to what degree. I'm, I don't think, it just seems like it's opening it up that some small condition could change and someone could say your variance is not is, is not applicable anymore. And usually we give out, I, that's why it leaves to the building department what is safe and you build it into the, the approval of the pool that it's safe, but not the zoning part of it. I don't think it's an issue either way because all variances, all special permits are based on the conditions at the time we grant the approval and none of that guarantees that future conditions will not be a problem. So I don't see that this is that we actually have to do anything special. Um, Rob, I don't know if you think otherwise, but otherwise I don't think we need to do anything special. In thinking I was just going permit. to, I was just going to ask Dennis if, if, if a particular concern could be baked into the building permit where if some structural scenario evolved that would be create an issue that they would then have to take certain steps to address that structural <coughs> instability or whatever it might be. So in regards to the, the, the CC for the pool or the specific occupancy for the swimming pool, I'm safe. No matter what we do, we are, we're covered. I was just worried on the end of the board to just make sure that there's no issues if they do remove the soil. So, you know, I'm gonna say you're allowed to have six feet from the property line for your swimming pool. That's where you are. If your patio is beyond that, that, that goes up to them. The fence is important as we talked about last time, which is clear. And I'm just gonna ask for their engineer or their pool designer to specify exactly what's going in and get steel inspections and so forth, given what the possible conditions could be. And if they choose to do that, then they will. But we, I would remove myself from that at that point after their engineer makes the determination. Uh, not that not so much a pool designer, but an engineer stating that, you know, what if this happens? And yeah, as soon as that pool becomes unsafe or that property becomes unsafe, um, you know, that, that will be up to the homeowner to rectify that with my predecessor, you know? Uh, and, uh, and that's where we are, so. Uh, you know, this is something that's, you know, could be down the line 20 years from now, you know, not even in my lifetime. Uh, Metro North doesn't really move very quickly in any direction. Um, so that's it. I was just looking after the board. Thanks. Thank you. So, Rob, if you think there's some language we should put in, please put it in the draft resolution. Okay. Otherwise. I, I, yeah, I think as... as Dennis described, I'm okay with the situation, okay with your approach to the resolution. I'm sorry, what, can we, could you be clear, what are we deciding to put into the resolution? I, I, at this point, I don't think anything <clears throat> is necessary beyond okay, thank the, you. the language. Uh, it, it sounds like it's a, a building department issue. And, and if, if something were to happen in the future, Dennis's predecessor or 
his predecessor's predecessor can deal with it from an unsafe structure perspective. All right, hopefully I'm back on um, the right. So the next one would be Smashburg, but we did that already. And the one after that is case number 6SP 2013-504, the Parkway. Um, and we have, I think, a draft resolution. Yeah, and I have lots of comments on the draft resolution. I can um, share my screen if you'd like, Robin. Okay, so at this point I will um, recuse. Okay, thank you, Greta. Um, Did I share my screen, Robin? Sure. I have to find my comments. Okay. All right, so... Um, I'm going to make give my comments. If anyone else has comments as we do, you should please stick yours in too. Um, okay, so the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth whereas clause that says, well, you got to fix the whereas. It's missing the e in Hang whereas. On. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to share it. Bear with me. I'm sorry. Okay. There we go. Wait. Something happened. Oh, that's the that's the resolution. Um, so. Are you on this one now here? So I have to look, I have to look at my draft. So I'm going to re go from my draft. So the fifth resolution, the fifth whereas clause, which is the misspelled whereas. Yeah, you're missing an E in your whereas. Oh, okay. That's Got it. Okay. I'm looking in the so substance of it, not the name. <laughs> the public hearing opened was open on this application on June 3rd, allowing members, plural, of the public to speak, not speaking, on the capital A application. I'm sorry, where, where are we? I'll read it again. Whereas the public no, hearing... I, 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 where, where are you? It's that same clause, the same okay. one corrected the whereas. Right. Whereas the public hearing was opened on... It should, since we've now defined it as the application, whereas the public hearing was opened on the capital A application on June 3rd, 2021, allowing members, plural, of the public to speak, not speaking, on the application capital A. And where, and okay, now the next whereas, whereas the public hearing was closed on June 3rd, and then the next whereas, Whereas the board um, considered the application and then it talks about two meetings and the September 23rd, 2021 meeting. Okay. Um, and then the next whereas- I'm board sorry, I'm, I'm Robin. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Um, yes, yeah, so that was when, which meeting was it that we just considered whether or not we were gonna reopen? Last meeting, September 23rd. Are we absolutely certain of that? Go yes. There, there hasn't been another meeting since then. So I did our, our discussion and then it came up to us, do you want to rehear? I followed the last time that we had the, the discussion. So I don't see how that could have happened if if we actually discussed it on the 23rd, at which meeting did we just consider whether or not we were gonna rehear hear it? At the, meet, at the last meeting, the issue of whether or not we should reopen came up and we decided that the comments were not, no, that couldn't have been because um, that would have had to have been at the, we, it couldn't have been the September 23rd meeting because was 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 what's her name here at the September 23rd meeting? Amber was Amber at the September 23rd meeting. Yes, yeah, she must have been. So at the September 20th, um, does anyone know? Ashley, are you there? Uh, yeah, it, if it was last month or, or to, uh, 2021, no, she she finished on the 14th. Okay, so then, but we didn't, it couldn't have been, at the, and I don't think we had a July 
I don't, I don't know that it, it wasn't as far back as July 22nd that that issue came up. So it must have been at the September 23rd meeting that the question the, came up. But I don't. September 23rd that. was just two weeks ago. Now, I believe it did come up in 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 July. Um, I, I, I think that was, was one of the meetings I covered. So you, Rob, you think it was the July meeting? I, this was on the agenda. Do, do we have minutes that we can check this again? So we're not no, we have no minutes. I thought, yeah, I don't think that we, um, we just didn't have time to get to it. This was on as a closed application um, and the resolution for the last meeting and we ran out of time and we just never got to it in September. Um, I actually, my notes from the last meeting say we, um, wait, I'm gonna open my notes, hold on. Um, my notes from the last meeting say, Discussion. So we had a discussion. So we did discuss it at the last meeting. We discussed something about it at the last meeting. Um, my other set of notes, I have two sets of notes, sorry. I didn't expect this change, so I'm sorry. I don't have review. I guess we can just verify that either, we either did or didn't. We could just figure it out. And if we didn't discuss, then we'll take out September 23rd. And if we did, it will be, and it's not a significant issue. And, and, and at the meeting at which um, it was asked of us if we wanted to um, reopen it, does that actually fit where, because it, it says where the board considered the, well, I guess we considered the application, we considered the materials contained, public comment and, and deliberated. Um, is that when we, should it be separate that we then considered whether or not to reopen it? Is that wrapped up? What we did when we were considering whether or not to reopen, is that- I don't know that it's, I don't know that it's relevant. We determined that there were, I mean, um, um, do we need to put it in is really the question. We considered whether or not there were significant. I had thought there were significant more. And then Amber said, no, no, no. She only had like two comments in which case we decided it wasn't worth it. So I'm not sure that it's relevant to say we, we that, uh, did an something and didn't do it. I thought that was at our in-person meeting. I kind of remember that it was that, the in-person yes. meeting and Amber was there and we talked about whether or not to reopen. Right. It was the in-person meeting. And so I think we had closed it, the meeting before and- Well, we closed it in June. I don't think that's the issue as to whether, the issue, the question now is only whether or not- What, we did, what did we do in July? On September 23rd. Okay, we definitely need to check the dates on when we reviewed this. Right, we closed it on June 3rd and then we discussed it after that. But we need to, we need to go back to minutes or the recordings to see what actually happened. I was able to get the Zoom transcript, which is, you know, a little. Well, Rob, not I think Robin's accurate. point is. I think Robin's point is we might not need to get into the granularity of whether or not the board chose to not take an action and and right. reopen. Yeah, board. I understand that, but I, I am just questioning whether this even came up at September twenty-three. It could be. No, wrong. no, I agree. If I'm wrong, then we, so somebody we just need right. to confirm. That's right? all I'm saying. Is that we need to check the the recordings. Yeah. Either one. It either we either did or didn't. If we, I have notes that we did, but if we didn't, then we didn't. Okay. Um, going to the next. Whereas the board doesn't find that several claim, complaints were made. Several complaints because the board they either were or weren't. So whereas several complaints related to noise coming from events on the premises have been made a part of the record, which is bizarre language. So I actually would say were presented to the board rather than have been made a part of the record. We don't usually use that language. I just, several complaints related to noise coming from events on the premises were presented to the board at the public hearings. I think is much clearer. We mentioned that this was a problem in the past as well with the last application. No. I didn't, do you want to <clears throat> add that? No, I don't know. Well, and that the existing status did not resolve the prior problems, the similar problems raised. You might want to, it's up to you. I don't know what it, if anybody else wants to do it. I don't know if it's necessary. We're just talking about the problems about this yeah. one. I don't know that we need to consider what was in the past. Because when well, I change. Well, it just shows that the, the problem's been. Okay. Whatever you so then, so then say it. So then add something that says something like, 
whereas issues related to noise um, had previously been presented, had also been presented to the board in connections with the 2000, with uh, uh, whatever it's called, the original, uh, the, where, I'm uh, sorry, I'm looking at the language. Yeah, with the prior with the, what would, were they called? The 2018 SUP renewal. Right. Okay. But um, they can, but uh, have not, and they need, and, and need to be further mitigated at this time. Well, I don't think we're making any. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're I think that just shows you that the steps we're taking were not just based upon something this time. It's no, no, that's good. You're right. Okay. Um, are we good then, with those edits as reflected? Yeah. You want David to repeat what he said? <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Did I miss something else? No, I don't know. I said, and you know, I think what you said, what Robin said, was, and the problems with the noise existed. You know, were addressed previously in the prior app application, <clears throat> but further steps are necessary to mitigate the same. Because, uh, but but I think you just put it part of the last whereas whereas yeah. issues related to. Noise had previously been raised in connection with the 2018-18 yes. SP renewal and um, continued to be a problem or something like and that. Are need, and, are, and are in need of further mitigation because they contain, yeah, you know, something like that. You pick yeah. the words and that to rub. persistent complaints? No, I think that the idea is that they this has always come up. And particularly, I remember the people next door, they've been before us twice already on this. And it's just like, we're not just picking on these people. This, this problem needs to be addressed. Now, we've done several ways of doing Where do you deal with the, the person who has to be on the premises? Well, we have to get into that. It's not here yet. It's one of the changes that has to be made. I, I would just cool. say recurring complaints rather than persistent. Yeah, yeah, recurring. Okay. Um, now, moving along then, there's another whereas, then it says, now therefore be it resolved that after duly reviewing the application and related materials and considering the same, the board hereby grants the application's request for renewal of the, not renewal of the renewal, renewal of the special permit to op operate the club on the premises and the next resolved- Subject to the, subject to the conditions contained herein, I think, don't you? Correct, mean? it doesn't need the other resol res resolved because we've just granted it here. Okay, so, uh, the special permit renewal shall be valid for a period of two years beginning today, because today's when we're going to vote. Um, that the following conditions, it's not that they shall remain in full force and effect. I the thought it was, I'm, I'm sorry, Robin, just before we go on. I thought it wasn't exact. Is it exactly two years? We wanted it to be September. Is that correct? If we, oh, oh. Two years from today. remember we had, we had a certain number of months um, that we were trying to have it come up. Well, so what do you want to do about but maybe that's correct because we're now it's October if we file this this month then that would make it September but um, I just remember that was our discussion. So then let's make it September 30th because when we, usually we do it based on the date we vote so why don't we just do it at the end of the month since we didn't vote on the 23rd. You're right we did talk about September that's when we wanted it to end. Because I don't remember. What, hold on. the The last resolution was granted on July twelfth, twenty eighteen. So I don't think the dates. If we went from July, we're not going to July. We're going through the whole year. So I would say, how about September thirtieth, and leave it at that, which cuts you through all of September. Does that work, Meg or David? Does it matter at all that their other that their their last special permit had expired. There's a gap there. Does that matter? No, because they'd apply. We always, we always. I, I understand yeah. that we, yes, but does it matter that it, it means that they're actually, they applied, but there was really no special permit in force if one expired and now we're saying that 
we're not backing it up that it was good as of the date that the other one expired. I just wondered. It seems like there's a gap now where they were had no special permit at all. I don't think it's I, I don't think that's an issue that's common. I think the bigger question though, which you which you 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 may not have realized you raised, but the question that you actually raised is the last special permit. Hold on. They asked for no, they just asked for a renewal. So I think we're renewing it for for a period to expire on September 30th. It didn't lapse, nothing lapsed. We have always taken the position that a special permit continues until if they've applied the four months before for a renewal, then we're still, then we don't treat it any differently. Most people have a gap between when we actually, not most people, it often occurs that we have that gap between when the special permit expires and when we actually vote. Should we say rather than saying when it when its validity commences, should we just say when it expires? Yes. And I'm sorry to continue this discussion because we had a long discussion about it. If the idea is that we, I thought we were thinking about we wanted them to have two summers, right? So we know, but it has to be filed four months, so that would be June. Right. Uh, we we knew that they could file. We may not make a decision, but that actually seems the beginning. So I'm thinking that perhaps. We push it out a little bit because the point was that we would have two summers and then have comments on how things went for two summers. And it just seems if we got it in June, actually, it would be before the summer is really taken off. So you're suggesting, if I understand, Mick, you're suggesting rather than have it run until, let's say, September 30th, we have it run until October or November. Yeah, I actually think November because it needs to be filed four months. Well, ahead. why don't we make it filed less? Why don't we do it differently? We can make a file three months in advance. Make it end of October. I don't want to wait till November. I would make okay, it. Let's say October with three months prior to October. That's fine. So when we get to that, let's go. So when we get to that point, Meg, let's, let's talk about it. Okay. So moving on. So this special permit for, shall be valid. You're at this. Shall be valid for a period of, um, for a period expiring on October 30th, 2021, with the renewal application having to be made by applicant no less than three months prior to the expiration date. So shall we say, shall expire as of October 31st, 2023? Yeah, sorry, I said 21, but yes, I had yeah. the wrong year, yeah. Um, with the renewal application, uh, I'm sorry, three months? Three months. Okay, so then we were that the following conditions. It shall also be expires. I think it expires. Oh, renewal term expires with an S. Um, yeah. That the following conditions shall apply. Not shall remain in full force and effect. Okay, so A, hours for organized events held inside the clubhouse shall be take out the amended to be, and it should just be. Oh, I'm sorry, Rob, Rob, she made, uh, Robin made a comment on B. Oh, I'm sorry. Edition cell. Oh, has he moved on? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm looking at mine. He went really fast and he can't find which, which line. Oh, I'll, I'll slow down, Rob. Just Okay. So now I'm on B, that the following yeah. condition shall apply. Do you see that? Not shall remain in full force and effect. Mm -hmm. And then the, the small a under B would be hours for organized events held inside the clubhouse shall be take out the amended to be, it just shall be no greater than as follows. Got it. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm caught up. Okay, then moving so to- those are hours, Are those the hours that they currently have? Yes, we didn't change them. Yes. Um, okay, then moving on to B, little b, that all organized events shall be conducted in strict compliance with SAP, SAPC house rules. And I think, that we previously said, but apparently not as previously provided to the board because at the last time they were here, um, Meg had specifically asked for a copy of those rules and we got a copy of those rules. And those are the rules on which we approve this based on those rules. So we don't want it just be to be any rules. So I think it's the rules as, pro as provided to the board. Um, so house rules as provided to the board, comma, which are to be enforced by the 
you know, SAPC board of directors. Okay. Um, then moving, if you're up caught, caught up, Rob. Yes, if you're okay with what I wrote for B. Oh, let me look, sorry. Has provided to the board. It was not as part of this renewal application as part of the uh, 21, the, the application for the 21, uh, of the 2018 uh, renewal. I thought it was when you just said I asked for the rules and they supplied The them. last time for the 2018 renewal. Oh. That's when you asked for them and that's when we got them. We didn't get them this time. Okay. Those are records. Those are records of the. We had it was in the record. Oh, okay. So Ashley posted on chat that uh, she has the Zoom transcript and the discussion on the parkway was just to hold discussion for the next meeting. I did remember it was discussed, but it, but so so we is don't. That have a discussion? discussion? Is that a discussion that we decided? To... No, we should take that. In. That's not a discussion. I can share it, but it's you know it's the Zoom. Transcript, so some of the words are a bit off, but um, I don't think it's um, a, 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 a um, I don't think it's a, uh, a a discussion. So we should take it out, even though I put it in. It shouldn't be in. Um, okay, so moving now to small to little H. Okay. It's the it says. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Can, can we go a little bit slower? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Sure, go ahead. Go I, was not able I had to no finish. comments. But if you okay, could, but if we could just for a moment go slowly. I couldn't find this resolution before, and so I'm looking at it now. Okay. Oh, if okay. You can scroll down a little bit farther, Rob, so I could just read a bit. Okay. I don't know where this fits in, but I thought we. I, I know that Dave and I had discussed about music outdoors and such, and perhaps that should fit in E that no organized events of action. Had a whole separate letter that um, you know, and we could go down to where your next comment. Is, but I don't know where we should put in the fact that we had talked about the condition that there is um, no amplified sound is allowed outdoors, and it's in C. It's so allowed C. until ten. Am I missing something? I'm sorry. Yeah, C says that during organized events held it's inside the clubhouse, there shall be. No outdoor live music or amplified sound. Okay, this no doesn't make sense because it's held held inside the clubhouse. I think right, I think we should change it then, Meg. But it doesn't need a different one. It should say that that during organized events there shall be Roman at one. It's not even. No, it's not even does it, during organized events. Yeah, it's was during events. Term, I'm sorry. It was organized events in terms of the club organizing and not sponsored. They had like two tiers. Can we just say events? I'll be no outdoor live music. That's fine. Yeah, during events, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, anytime that like somebody just having a game again. Well, we didn't really discuss whether but we or did not talk about music. we did talk about acoustic. See, I think we munged this. We were thinking it was the club. Oh, I see. No, this is good. Outside. Yeah. I no, thought I looked. I looked at our notes, and we thought acoustic music until 10 p.m. outside, and no amplified sound at any time outside. But this is this is definitely no. This doesn't. This, I'm sorry. This was definitely intended to be about the clubhouse. Um, I don't know why outdoor. I would not. I would leave the not delete that during organized events. I would just take out outdoor. That there um, shall be no ample. I don't know. This is a really munged paragraph here. I don't think we ever said that they couldn't have amplified music inside the clubhouse. No, I'm not saying no, that this, is, this deals with outside. Yeah, outside. So I'm, I'm yeah, but, yes, but, about, but are we talking at, 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 in C? Are we talking about inside clubhouse or outside? I think outside. Should, outside. But, but it says no live music. And even if wait, it's wait, 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 wait. Let's go. Let's slow down. Slow down. C says organized. We'll fix it. Hold on. Organized events held inside the clubhouse. That's what we're describing here. Nothing to do with outside events. That during organized events held inside the clubhouse. Oh, that's wrong. You're right. You're right. Shall be no lot. There shall be. So that one, the next one doesn't fit. All windows shall be shut to prevent noise at a certain time or amplified sound, something. But this is, it munge the two for sure. So you well, want to. But, but yeah. it's, I'll point out that also you see 
E says no outside organized events are permitted after 9 p.m. So the point here was inside organized events are, I, are can be much later. Um, well, okay, so I think C is about inside events. It is. Windows and doors and amplified sound. Right. So, and we can say right. inside the house, you, the you hours need a are shepherd. somewhere else. Yeah, you need the a hours shepherd. are somewhere else. So with that during organized events and held the, that, I'll just say it, but it should be whenever there is live music or amplified sound inside the clubhouse, right. windows and doors must be shut, I guess, at all times or by 10 p.m. What do we want to say? I think I think 10 p.m. I don't say we're 9 p.m. because we talk about no outside events are permitted after 9 p.m. So it seems to me that yeah. that's when we should stop. We should make the doors and windows closed. Okay. Robin, should I just get rid of Roman numeral one here? Is that yeah? I think that's right. That during organized events held inside the clubhouse, there shall be because you don't have outdoor live. Music. I'm sorry, so that that yeah. I think that's when, why, it's not that during, but it's. It's it's only when, that when during, there is music or amplified sound during an organized events held inside the clubhouse, all windows and doors shall be present will be shut to prevent noise emanating at 9 p.m. Do you at need to say organized events or can you say that when there is amplified music inside in the clubhouse? Yeah, when there is in right the the window. Think, the yeah, when there is, you know what? Just take it out. Just take out everything. And the and close and just leave in Romanet two that says all windows shall be sh that when there oh no that's fine when there is amplified where am I saying where am I missing this I'm sorry I'm Rob I'm sorry but there's a lot of people shouting at you right now but when there is amplified sound it's not just music it could be a you know microphone. amplified music or sound I would leave it in music with the performers some music. How about amplified sound or music to make sure we understand? It's all right, that's what Dave said. Okay. Yeah. Inside the clubhouse. All windows, and can we say doors? Because I understood yes. that the doors made a big difference. All windows and doors shall be shut. At all times or after 9 p.m.? How about when there is amplified sound or music inside the clubhouse past p.m.? After, no, after some p.m., all windows and doors shut. 9 p.m. Just because we don't have out, we're not allowed out, an outdoor events after nine. So that's the time we don't want to have noise. We're concerned about noise. Okay, fine. Right, that's fine. That's good. I think that's good. What you wrote. Now, what about what about the outside? We had we had said I thought no amp up. Well, no, the outside says no outside organized events are permitted after 9 p.m. at all. So you're not going to have outside. Noise. That's the problem is from events. Right, but I was suggesting, and I thought Dave at least was in agreement with me. Yeah. We we had discussed it that there should be no amplified sound. We asked them if they have. They said no, we don't have any events. They don't have them now, so we're not stopping something that they had. But we could say no amplification outside because I don't want to say that. I don't, we didn't really. I would prefer it wasn't. It wasn't discussed. We let other people. I mean, you know, I'm not sure why we would do that. And I don't know that I it's a club. They might have things in an afternoon and with, with sound. And I, I don't think that they should have amplified sound outside. They've gotten a lot of complaints about noise. They can have acoustic music. They can have events. They can shout and scream and have fun. But it's the amplification across yeah, the board. I agree with neighbors. you. Know that I don't think, I'm sorry if I could just finish. Oh, sorry. For no amplification, amplified sound outdoors. Um, yeah, I think that's, I, I don't know, but we don't prohibit that for anyone else. My next door neighbor has amplified music when they have events. Um, and I think that prohibiting amplified sound at all times from outdoors seems to me wasn't really discussed. It was not the issue. Um, and I would actually have a problem with doing that. And we put some condition that any amplified sound outdoors um, must be moderate or modified or, or you yeah. know. There we are different had different complaints here. That was the difference, Rob. And we had a lot of complaints here, historically. Well, we had, well, we had complaints, but you know, if you said to me, I don't think we asked anyone, well, what time was the noise that you were concerned about? What is it? We didn't ask specifically. I don't know that they were in the middle of the afternoon that they were complaining about. I thought they were complaining mostly about nighttime. I know that I know that when we did modern on the rails, we 
that there was no amplified sound outside on their yeah. table at any time. So we have had that. And also I would like to point out that this is not in the M1 district. This is a slightly different situation than the, the country clubs that we were looking at. This is a, a community or a corporation here in, in right, right in the middle of a residential district and it has gotten noise complaints. Um, so I would say no amplification out for organized events. Yeah, board, board, I wanna, board, yeah. board and Madam Chair. So the, the same day that there was a discussion, not a discussion about this in person, uh, we talked about uh, perhaps doing a site visit and um, adding shrubbery to no, the- I, I, I think we already considered that and we're not gonna do that. Yeah. Sorry, let's just keep moving. Let, let's, I, I, my comment, I would have to share, I, I, I agree with Meg a bit because I asked myself this, what would they do that they need amplification outside in that neighborhood in a residential area? And what do they need? They wanna have some people outside gathering and things, that's fine. But to start with, I don't know. Did they? I don't think they ever said they needed it. Yeah, they never said they had. So we're not preventing them from doing something that they are already in the habit of doing, right. curbing it. We're just preventing it from happening. And what if they could? We're an organization that has not monitored itself well, that has gotten complaints, has not responded to those complaints well with with uh, to the neighbors, and they are they are right in the middle, nestled in a residential district. So I, and I think we have, when we had this, we had a restaurant that had noise complaints and was facing a lot of residences. We did say outside, you can't have any amplification. We did something similar. Yeah, but, but and I agree, we did that for modern on the rails, but there we had direct complaints about, I just don't recall that anybody specifically they, they saying- They never said that, that the it was your, excuse me, May. I don't recall anybody specifically saying, um, that it was a problem during the daytime. And if I'm wrong, and if I missed that, that's fine. I just didn't recall that. But nobody said it was a problem for modern on the rails. Either. Yeah, they did. They talked about Sunday the day. Was a problem during, during the day. They specifically talked about problems during the day. I, I don't remember that. So. Well, let me ask you, what would be another fallback? If you didn't say all the time, would it be after six? Would it be after seven uh, during the week? I don't know why you're getting involved with, with allowing outdoor amplifications I, I don't know whatever all right I, i'm okay if you want to change it that's fine i'm not going to object to it i, I just yeah. don't recall it so i just i, I think i i think that it should be in there that okay. no amplification okay outside i i could do standalone language like what's highlighted here okay yeah all right which was that something that was picked up from a former resolution that, that Every, everything, all of these conditions were essentially, ex except the ones I'm editing, were from the last resolution. Okay, so we actually had, it was buried in there and it's a little unclear because it came after something about inside the cloud house, but the fact that there's no outdoor live music or amplified sound was already in the past resolution. No, it doesn't. No, it's not that there's not going to be outdoor live music. There can be outdoor live music. They just can't be outdoor amplified right. music. Yeah, or sure. Amplified sound or music. Yeah. Sure. Uh, period. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, going on. So now we get to H. Unless Meg, you have something else before that? Um, no, I'm looking at my notes for what I need. Okay. The applicant yeah. says yeah. the applicant shall identify to the board a person employed by the club who is responsible for the enforcement of this resolution and the conditions. Yeah. And such such employee shall be present at all member sponsored events at the club. And maybe it should be at all events at the club. We can make it at all events. Well. They're all organized events. Because if you recall, the big concern yeah. was they were saying nobody was there who was responsible. If it's a member, right? It was all about member sponsored events. So the, the, when the board identifies a person, whoever that person is, that person has to be there 
at all member sponsored events. Should it be a person or persons just to well, give them some flexibility? Well, they're identifying a person who is responsible for the enforcement of the resolution. Uh, so whoever that person is, that's the person who has to be there. Robin, I tried some other language. Can I just try it with you? Oh, sure. Here, yeah, I don't, I'm not uh, fucking I don't, language. I know, I know. I just kind of did this while you guys were talking. It's much too long, though. But it says at all times when member sponsored events are taking place, an employee or authorized representative of the applicant who is not a sponsor or participant in the event shall be physically on the property and authorized to take action to ensure compliance with the conditions herein and to receive and respond to any complaints from residents of other properties. Um, I think some of that's fine, David, but since since H already says they have to identify a person, I think let's not have them have, you know, you're going to, you know, let's have one person that's always the person responsible. So take your language and add it to H instead of what I added. I think so. Well, I don't, I don't have exactly what you wrote, but if you say, shall identify the board, a person employed by the club who is responsible for the enforcement of this resolution and the conditions you in, and such person shall be present at all member sponsored events and all of the things you said about shall be empowered to take action or whatever else you said we could add there the problem is, the problem is though that by picking one person robin yeah i don't think that's realistic because i think what happens if that person's sick or what happens if then they let's have it people? then let's have h say shall identify to the board a person or persons one or more persons or is it to the building department i mean i guess i don't know i mean i think it's more i don't have a problem with that but i think it's important that they are responsible yeah, and then no, no, I said we there, should add that. We should absolutely add that. And there. there can't be a sponsor. Correct. They got to be well, that's why it says employee. Awesome. It says employee, not a not a um, not a member. So if it's an employee, and it be an authorized be, rep or just an employee. Um, I think if they're an employee and they're authorized, what you you the language you had something right. about how they're authorized to take action and enforce should be and added. Authorized to uh, uh, and be physically on the property and authorized to take action. Yeah to ensure yeah i think all of that's good yeah because otherwise you just have it's going to be i don't know who was there compliance with the conditions here and and to receive and respond to complaints yeah, so david can yeah. you can you read that part more slowly so sure. that rob can get it or, or email it to me uh, sure can do that too Hang yeah that, that'll be easiest all right. okay. I'm, not, I'm not very good at dictation <laughs> i'm not going to touch that all right <laughs> oh, get this. we get this here come on okay let's see um, this is not my. I'm, I, I'm having one computer I'm using for one purpose and another for another. So that means I'm neither doing well with either one. <laughs> Just give me a second. All right. Um, give me one second. I'll give it to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Just give me one second. Here we are. You know, we said employed at the club because that's what we said before, but um, I suppose we don't, do we really care if it's an employee or a member as long as it's not the member who's having the event? Um, yeah. the, uh, what's, your, what's your email? It's R Stout, R S T O U T. Right. At woh.com I uh, did you get it did you get it did you get it not yet why not something I <laughs> instant yeah, go outside David. mine doesn't go in the house you got to go outside <laughs> didn't get it Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Ah. There you go. I don't know. It's not married to the language, but it's not. I just wanted to, it's not someone there who can watch it, you know? Yeah, I was dancing because they played late, so I got to dance late, right? 
No, no, your language is good, David. It's yeah, good. Yeah. You, you do need to say something like that. No, I think I say it. And, they, they'll be present. and so someone goes to complain. How about, how about instead of employed, a person or persons assigned by the club to be responsible? Well, why just, well that you can put that employee or authorized person or authorized yeah, representative. Just leave employee or authorized representative. Because otherwise it's going to be, well, I thought it was Joe. It? So it's an employee or authorized representative. Yeah. So shall identify to the board a person or persons or employed by the club or authorized or authorized representative. Right. Robert, you'll play with that, right? Mm-hmm. But is it, I guess the one question, Rob, do you, we really want this, that they're going to give this to the board? Sort of puts us in the operational aspect of this thing. I mean, I guess. We said this, this was in the last one. This was in the, this was right, in Fine, the, fine, fine, fine. So then why don't you say, uh, leave it uh, filed with the Board of Appeals so that it's filed with us, right? But, the, the point know. is you want a contact person the day of the event to reach out to if something happens. And I don't know well, that the, the board. I think that should be the Department of Buildings. Yeah, that's, I agree with that. It's the building department. We're not going to look at it. We're not going to enforce it. Yeah. Robin will say, what are they playing? What kind of music? <laughs> I want to know if I can dance to it. You there know, you go. I, I know where you're at, Robin. No problem. So that's the first line on H shall identify to the we're changing board to some department of buildings. Let's make a department of buildings. Well, why don't you do this? If I may suggest say at all times, da, 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 well, like what we, what we talked about and then say the person, the foregoing person shall be identified, shall contact shall be provided to the building department because otherwise are you conditioning it upon the one or the other? This is, no, no, this is the condition. Good, yeah. no, that's good. That's yeah. good. You follow me, Robert, on that? Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, no, I'm Robert, you got? I'm um, sorry, it's identify. No, no, in other words, no, you're no, going no. to start with identify because the then the failure to identify, identify. The, the issue Take is not to, to identify. Yeah, Take the out issue, to the board there. Yeah, the issue is that at all times when member-sponsored events are taking place, da, 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 period. Then you say the person, the aforesaid person, shall, name. the name of the contact shall also be provided to the building department prior to the events. So Be because otherwise you have a situation where you don't know what the contingency, what's the antecedent. So in other words, there's a rule. The rule is you've got to have someone there, period. The next aspect is, okay, you also have to file that name. But the, the thrust is not filing the name. The thrust is, these are the conditions. Because otherwise, we're going to have every condition we ever put in a resolution. The building department's going to have a telephone book. So, so, so the step step one is that the applicant should have somebody at each event. Bingo, right? And step two is in the same sentence, the paragraph is that the name of the aforesaid individual, should, the contact shall at all times be on file with the building department. Uh, Madam Chair and Board, if I may. Yes. The um, person, person oh, and sure. contact. The contact info should go to the building department and the police department. Okay. Please. So what? please put that in, Rob. Yeah. Yeah, because if it's a weekend or something, it's going to be the police department or nighttime. It's yeah. going to be the police department that's enforcing it. Thank you. Ben, do you, find, you have to bring up your suitcase? No, but I, I got to get a suitcase here. Robin, are we also? I'm sorry. Hello? We're still, we're still, Rob is still typing it in. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I just want to know what my suitcase was. I'm packing to get out of here. That's it. Uh, What's the time? Yeah. I don't need to sleep anymore. Hey, it's only 930, David. Does that make sense so far? When yeah. I typed at the beginning? Um, during each event. Is it each event or is it a member-sponsored event? Well, we were concerned during each event. Why shouldn't it be during each event? Okay, fine. At each event, the applicant must have or shall have. An shall have is fine. Shall have an employee. And I, I would take out the identity of that. 
I would leave that. I would take that separate because you're merging all these different thoughts. So mm -hmm. I would go after the word representative present on the property, um, physic physically on the property, and authorized to take action to ensure. See, that's where I would go. See, I would. It's on the bottom there, isn't it? Yeah. Or acting as an right. See, and authorized. I said. Well, why? Yeah. See, do we want yeah. to get involved with who's authorized to take action, or do we just want to know who the police should? Yeah. No, I think. No, 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 no. Yeah. Two different okay. things, Robert. Two different things, at least from my standpoint. Yeah. Thing one is, this is the condition. It has nothing to do with the police. It has nothing to do with the building department. If they tell nobody, I don't care. If they violate it, that's the problem. Second is, so that we, because of the history, we say, okay, and that aforesaid person, they have, their name, contact information has to be with such and such. So that's why I would keep them as separate thoughts. They're not contingent upon, they don't float with, you know, the primary one is you can't do it. The second is how we enforce it. So no, I would, the primary one is you have to do this. Right, right, exactly. You have to have someone there. You're right, I'm sorry. So I would say at all times when members of the events are taking place and employ the applicant who is not a sponsor or participant in the event shall be physically on the property and authorized to take action to ensure compliance with the conditions herein and to receive and respond to any complaints from residents or other properties. Yeah, and it, hold on one second. Period. You and have then you to put, say authorized to take action because you don't want somebody who's there. Oh yeah, I'm here, but nobody, I'm just yeah, here. Yeah, that's they what I They hired me and told me to come, but nobody told me I was supposed to do anything. They have right, to be somebody Robert, who knows that's, they're responsible. That's what I emailed you, right? I had that in there, I think. That's, yes, I'm. That's all right, that's all right. All right, so this is a blend of our language, David. During each event, the applicant shall have an employee or authorized representative who is not a sponsor of such event. Well, what about, no, oh, time out. You want to put participant? That's what I, what about that? Robin? I'm sorry? You want to put down after the word not a, I had. But if it's a, if it's a, a club sponsored one, if, if it's a club, it's like an all, everybody in the club. The yeah, club sponsored one. He's the club. The person is going to be a member of the okay, club. Okay, gotcha. all right, fine, fine, fine. That's fine. All right, it's not a sponsor of such event. Comma. You need a comma there, don't you? Physically on the property and authorized to take action to ensure compliance with the conditions herein and to receive and respond to any complaints from residents of other properties. Period. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Write it to the word. That's the period. And then you put down a sentence that says the contact information, the name, the contact information, uh, right, of the aforesaid employee or authorized representative shall be provided and filed with the building department. I don't think filed, just filed shall be provided to. To the building department. And shall be provided in writing because otherwise I called them and I left my message. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> so I'll be shall be provided in writing to the building department and police department for at least how many days before? I don't other. think it has to be any days before. Fine, prior. fine. Period, period. Okay, I just think it says prior to. Uh, prior to the event. Yeah. I mean, you could do it a minute before as long as it's- I, guess, know. I, I think that's, you're right, you're right. Yeah, we all slip into overreaching. You're right. No, it's right. And I'm going. I'm going to end it there. Yeah. Boy, that's that's is that politically correct to merge building and police as departments? <laughs> it's accurate. <laughs> okay, I'm good with that. Yeah that a copy of this shall be provided to every member of the club? Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah? Okay. What do you I want? I have anything Whatever. else. Um, All right. Uh, Meg, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Meg! I checked my notes and- Oh, I do <laughs> My notes. So we're good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, does somebody want to make a, a, a motion to adopt this? Yeah, we have to take Greta off the yeah. Yep. She's, yeah, well, no, she would just say recuse. You would just put recuse down there for Greta. Um, 
I'll make All a motion right. to adopt the resolution. All right, I'll set. Yeah. The revision okay. to adjust the new. Meg. Second. Meg. Yes. We're voting. Yes. Meg, did you say yes? Sorry. I, I did say yes. Oh, sorry. Okay, and I vote yes as well. So this and motion, yes this well. resolution as amended is adopted. Okay. So clean up the formatting and get it around for signatures. Okay. That's right. um, Does that do it? The next item on the agenda is 15A 2018 416 Waverly, which isn't a closed application, although it's listed as a closed application, but is a discussion of the FEIS. So, Ashley, are you there? Um, yes, I am here. Okay. Um, and the applicant is the applicant is going to present, right? Did I get that right? Yes. So I'm going to promote the applicant. Okay. They I'm going. going to be, I'm going to be right back. He can start, and I'll just have to listen. But I have to. I, I'm just going to step aside from out for a minute. Okay. Um, but but he. Can just can, ask council a question first. Yeah. Did you have a question, David? I have a question to council. So understand the process because I didn't even get mine. I. There was a problem. I didn't get the FEIS, so that's <clears throat> what so I do want to review. Uh, this is an initial presentation regarding the draft. Is that my understanding? No, yes, this sir. is about the FEIS, yeah. not yeah. the draft. The draft. No, DEIS. but the draft of the. But it's. I think it's referred to as the draft. Of yes. The FEIS. Right. Right. We are. Not, and it's ours to adopt at some point. But my, my my inquiry is: Do we have an opportunity after tonight? We hear them to have them come back, and then we react to it. Uh, yes, because you have, you have substantial comments from your right. Yeah, I understand. But we but don't. We have. We it was only submitted like two weeks ago, right, Ashley? When was it submitted? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it was submitted just in time for the deadline for this meeting. Um, there Which are was, hard copies available. Right. So no, I don't think the board members have had a chance to look at it yet. So um, the applicant is going to present. Ashley has her comments, or Ashley and AKRF have their comments, and. Um, we'll get to review the FEIS and we'll set a date for a whatever the next step would be. And we have, do we do better? And I'm just posing this uh, hypothetically, but is it better, Robin, if instead of the applicant speaking first, that we all take a chance to review everything and then have the applicant come in, at which point we kind of do the whole package? Ashley says that it's customer. Ashley, you explain. Yeah, maybe, maybe I can give a, a brief introduction of, of what we're doing tonight. So um, the applicant has, uh, you know, we have the DEIS. You had a public hearing on the DEIS. A number of comments were submitted from both the public as well as the board members. The applicant has gone back and prepared a preliminary final environmental impact statement as part of that project, they have made some pretty substantial revisions to the plan, which is what they would like to present uh, this evening to the board. Uh, and they have drafted responses to all of the comments that were submitted on the draft environmental impact statement. So the preliminary final environmental impact statement is currently on the village's website. And it's also hard copies are also available for yeah. each of the board members at Village Hall. So if you haven't had a chance to pick it up yet, it, it is there and, and okay. ready. Um, ACARF has prepared a memorandum on that initial draft, which outlines some comments, which we expect the applicant will um, update. And then once you've had a chance to review the document, uh, hopefully at the next meeting, the board members could provide their comments on the document so that the applicant can make those additional changes because ultimately the FEIS is the lead agency's document and the voice of the FEIS and the way that comments are responded to are need to be in a manner that the, the majority of the board agrees with. Right, the uh, board has I to recall, adopt it as its FEIS, correct? The board has to adopt it as its yes, FEIS. Yes, ultimately the board has to adopt I just, it. I guess my point is that it, with the, um, the comments here, which I looked at, which are interesting, and are dated yesterday so you know yes i mean yes I, well we only got the document you know two I'm weeks ago and it's I'm just, all i was questioning if this is the right time or they um, actually, no, you just, had said this was the customary process that the applicant would present so that's why I yes this is the customary was, process that this is a good opportunity for the applicant to be able to walk through the changes that they've made in response to the comments from this board so that it gives you some context as you're reading the, the document 
um, so you could you know, right. see what their their thought process was. Gotcha. All right, rock and roll. Yeah. Um, sorry, I, as I said, I'll be right back, so you can. Okay. Here on mute. Oh, I, I, you can start. I have to step away for a minute. You can start. I will listen in um, to anything I missed. No but go ahead. So is that my cue? Yes, it that's is your cue. cue. Good evening. Thank you very much. For, for the record, my name is Tony Joffrey. I'm a member of the law firm McCuddy and Fader, 445 Hamilton Avenue in White Plains on behalf of the applicant. Uh, I'm joined this evening. You see Murphy on the screen as well as by Michael Hudson. Uh, Ashley, can you also elevate Kim Martelli to a panelist? And Kim is going to share her screen in a moment if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just going to give a brief overview. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we haven't uh, been before the, the board in a while. We've been uh, doing a lot of work since the last time we've appeared before you. And I think that'll be reflected in the presentation that you see this evening. It's not going to be a long presentation, but we certainly wanted to identify for the board that we took to heart the comments that were received during the DEIS public hearing process. The board had a number of comments and concerns as well as members of the public. And the applicant has returned with, the, with a preliminary FEIS, which I think reflects on the comments that we did here. Um, the, the project has been re-envisioned and uh, the project has changed significantly from what you've seen previously in the DEIS. Uh, Kim is going to walk you through that in a moment, but I just wanted to give you some highlights and, and thank the board for the comments and the concerns. Uh, and I think you'll, you'll respond favorably um, to the changes that have been made, which we believe are more closely aligned with the village's goals, as well as with the, uh, the, the proposed maker zone. Um, the, the, Prior proposal did propose to remove some of the buildings on the property, but leave uh, one of the buildings at the corner. Um, all of the buildings, except for the existing self-storage, are proposed to be raised, which we believe is an improvement. Uh, as part of the changes, and you'll see that the proposed addition right now is separated into five separate distinct segments. Uh, the property um, and the building that is on the property reflects, uh, we believe, a, an appropriate transition. And the treatment significantly reduces the mass, which was one of the significant concerns that were raised by the majority of the board members. Uh, you'll see in the proposal- uh, Jeff, you, could I ask Judge Rector? You said there are five segments now. You, that'll, Mr. Newfield, when, when Kim walks you through, you'll you'll. Oh, I see. I got you. Fine. Good. Good. Thank okay. you. And, Thank and I'm sorry, you. also to interrupt. At some point, you will put visuals up. Is that yes? I'm just getting. I'm, I'm just setting the context for you. And and Kim is going to be. You know, so I can I'm, turn them on whenever you want. Yeah, I'm the boring guy that gives you the overview. Kim gets to show you all the really nice, pretty pictures and take all all the credit, which is her credit. You know, she did a wonderful job, and you'll see. Um, the board also commented with respect to the height. And as I mentioned, the height will step down. So it'll transition to three stories to two stories. And importantly, the building that we proposed in the DIS to remain at the corner is proposed to be eliminated and, in, and be replaced by a small pocket park with benches and, and landscaping that really will help the transition uh, of this, this, this corner. Um, when Ms. Martelli's done, um, knowing that there were some significant impacts as a result of the last storm in the village, uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Stein just to walk you briefly through some of the stormwater uh, proposal improvements. And I want to leave you with that the proposed uses are also changing uh, with respect to this proposal. The Murphy Brothers contracting business, which was going to remain as uh, in the building on the corner, is going to be relocated into the new building. A new woodworking shop reflective of the, uh, the new maker or the proposed maker zone is also going to be incorporated into the proposal, as well as a third use, which is a, an incubator professional office space. So uh, with that context, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Martelli to walk you through the, the, the revisions. Before you, before you step down, you, you were talking very quickly, so I need help on the last three things. One is they're going to move, Murphy Brothers is going to move into the building itself. Yes. Or the building. And the, the second one, I didn't get. What was the second one? A proposed woodworking shop. That will be in the, in the building, right? That's correct. And then you, you said an incubator. You got to help me with that. What is that? Prof professional office space. Okay. Like where you rent an office or shared offices, et cetera. Right. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> and that'll be in And are the amounts and everything in, in the document itself? 
that yes, and you can see that on page uh, one four of the, oh, of the document. Okay. okay, thank you. That's right. And again, in, uh, as, as Ms. Lyer uh, indicated to the board, uh, hard copies have been uh, at Village Hall for you to pick up, as well as there is a link on the website that you can go directly to the document as well. But uh, Ms. Martelli. Um, uh, good evening, Chair, members of the board. I'm Kim Martelli, owner and principal of KTM Architect. We are located also here in the village of Mamaronik, just down the street from Village Hall and Fenimore Road. Um, so I'm, I'm going to limit the visuals to the ones that are pertinent to the conversation uh, that Mr. Joffrey just kind of summarized. But I think the most helpful to you is I'm going to start with um, an illustration of the current site plan. And I'll highlight what we were just mentioning, which is um, the Pantone, the gray building in the far right corner. That's the existing self-storage facility. And the building, which was originally intended to be maintained, we often call it the corner building at the corner of Waverly and Fenimore. You'll see in our new proposed design, it's intended to be removed. We had initially always intended to remove what's called uh, the barn building, some of the smaller structures along the back or south side of the lot, and the central two-story Murphy Brothers contracting offices. Okay, we can always loop back to this. And just historically as a reference, we've kept in for illustration a reminder of that indication of the larger building with the corner building remaining. And we're gonna depart from that, and show you our new designs. So the full package you, package you have is a complete site plan. This is just a helpful illustration. I'm gonna enlarge it as much as I can on the screen. And the colorings are helpful to indicate light gray being the existing self-storage facility, approximately 40,000 square feet. And the other colors represent the tiers of the new um, addition. So the, the darkest one is an only two-story section. If you'll notice, we pulled the proposed building 27 feet off of Fenimore, as opposed to the prior setback, which was about 7.8, I believe. Um, as you step back in your next tier, we have a three-story structure, which wraps around the highest portion, which is a four-story structure consistent with the existing self-storage facility. Um, and as mentioned, where the corner building once was located, there is a very charming pocket park. And we've done a rendering to give you a sense of the scale of that park. It has access off of both Waverly and Fenimore with a lovely little circular walkway and some charming benches for usage. Can I just ask you, the building itself in terms of the envelope, the external envelope, that's the same size, you're just reducing the height or were you also reducing the front, the, the depth and other provisions? The, the footprint is smaller. Uh, the original footprint brought us to a coverage of 59%. The current application brings us to a footprint of 52% of the total lot area. I'm doing quick math in my head. I believe it's 1,250 square feet less than the prior application. And I think probably the most helpful um, is the inclusion of some valuable renderings. So in, in one view, you can see a variety of vantage points of the amendment. And what we were describing as the five independent areas is we've used this in historical and successful designs to create some differentiation between the scale and massing of the buildings. So this bottom right corner is a good reference to five, meaning the far left is the lowest two-story structure, the second is a three-story structure, and the third, fourth, and fifth, as they tie into the existing self-storage building, are all four stories with varying elements and varying depths. It helps us create some depth and some character in the architecture of the building. Is that, that, called, is that the five segments that they refer to? That's correct, Mr. Newfield. And that top view gives you an, a bit of an over, overview, a little bit of an aerial of that pocket park, which will have both ground plantings and additional trees proposed. And you can see an overview of our parking design, similar to the current access off of Waverly, two-way parking within the site, and then one-way egress onto Fenimore, heading into the village. 
And I, I pulled together some highlights on what the zoning variance reductions are. But I think the ones we'd like to focus on are, as a reminder, our initial coverage intention was to go from the current 45% coverage to 59. We'd now like to propose 52. That is 2% over the current, um, over the permitted. Okay. I'm, I'll correct that. Sorry, Tony, it's my mistake right there. Um, and the maximum uh, uh, FAR, uh, we originally were proposing a 2.43 FAR, 107,000 square feet and change. We have now reduced that to a 1.92, 84,812. Large numbers I'm describing represents approximately 23,000, 22,000 square foot difference. Um, and with respect to overall impervious area, we've been able to propose an overall impervious area reduction of about 2. Point, like I said, 2.8, I think I got that right, 2.8%, about 1,250 square feet in overall impervious area reduction. And the, some of the prior variances remain, we're still seeking the fourth story uh, within a three-story limit, but we're not looking to exceed height limitations. Um, and as I mentioned, a prior 7.8 foot setback will now be 27 plus feet setback. I thought that there was a reference earlier uh, this evening where you said the height will step down from three to two stories. Yep, so I just zoomed back to that. So you'll see the two story begins at Fenimore, three story adjacent, four story as it approaches the existing. So oh, this, so, white, okay, this white so structure the, begins at two. All right, all right, so that it's that, okay. I took that to mean the whole thing. So the height it, it goes from it go it starts at two and goes to four. That's correct. The the area closest to Fenimore will be a two story structure. And the um the the supplemental occupancies, the woodworking shop, Murphy Brothers offices, and the co working space, which is a business very familiar to our firm. We've had great success with one in Larchmont now, and we're looking at another one in Scarsdale. Those facilities are located in both the two-story and the three-story structure. If, you're, if it helps, I can go into the floor plans to remind everyone where the different occupancies are. Well, if you could just, I would appreciate it if you could just very quickly, the two-story will be occupied by what? Sure, sure. So the two-story, I'm, I'm not- did I, I don't, want, I don't care about the details. I'll look at that, but I just want to- Okay, no problem. So the two-story, the ground floor of the two-story is the woodworking space. The second floor of the two-story, second floor of that two-story is Murphy Brothers. Uh -huh. The third is out. The third floor of the three-story structure. Okay, what's that, what's that? So that's the first, let's do it building by building, okay? So the, the next one is a three-story one, right? The three-story only has one, other than self-storage, one occupancy at the top level, the third level, and that's the co-working space. The which one? Co-working, co-working where multiple oh, yeah, right. okay. entrepreneurs can join in and work together. Share a printer, share, share, a, share a kitchen. Uh, okay. And then self-storage is on the bottom floors of that? Self-storage is on every floor in limited amounts. So it's a little bit smaller on the first floor because we, we also have the full we're working space. Second floor, it occupies everything but the last bit of it. I'm scrolling through as I mentioned them. Third floor, it's pulled back because obviously it's a shorter, smaller footprint. And fourth floor, it occupies 100% of that area. So cell storage is so cell storage is in the two story and the three story as well. Self storage is on every floor of the addition. Is in every floor as well as every segment. Not every segment. Well, that's so right. Okay, you've There's got a two-story segment. Now, let me ask, because I, I'm going to lost. So you've got a two-story segment. Remember that? You have the ground yep, that, floor. It has no self-storage. It right, so has no self-storage. Okay, right. just a sec. So when you say it all has it, so no self-storage. Okay. I, I, I think I was clear. Every floor has self-storage on it. Okay, well, we're going building. Start by telling them which building you're They're not about. separate buildings, and that's very important to understand but about the, the third, architecture. The third, the three-story building. You have uh, office spaces on the first floor. What, what's on that? I'm lost there. Woodworking is on the first floor. 
on the, the woodworking is on the, on the, on the, that's on the two story, right? It's on both the two oh, okay. and the three story. Right. Cause I want to clarify, I want to make sure the board understands. If you look at the floor plans, these are not separate buildings. These are just differing depths of facade and differing okay. architecture. So woodworking is on the first floor. Correct. Okay, what else? Murphy Brothers is on the second floor. I got you, okay. Oh, working's on the third floor. Of both the two-story portion and the three-story portion. The two-story portion has Murphy Brothers. And the three-story portion is Murphy Brothers on the second Same floor thing. as yeah. well? Yeah. yeah. Three, no. no, no. So Murphy Brothers is only on the second floor of the two-story portion, yep. but the yeah, one's working. But the woodworking shop is on the first floor of the two and three story portions. Correct. Correct. It's a larger square footage. Got it. Because okay. it's woodworking, you need space to do really good crafty woodworking. But well, isn't Murphy Brothers also in the three story on the uh, located on the second floor? They're on the second story of the two story portion. And what about on the three story portion? The co-working is on. It's only on the third floor of the three-story portion. Who is also, on it? Self storage, Dave. Self Murphy Brothers is only in the two-story portion, not at all in the three-story portion. Oh, not at all in the three-story. Okay. Yep. So I'm on that third floor now, and this is the co-working space. I'm on the third floor, right where I can look out at Fenimore Road, and I could I could do it in model too. No, what 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 floor is the is the co space the office space is on? Third floor. Okay. The second and who's on the second there? Who's on first? Murphy Brothers. <laughs> Sorry, on I had to say I had to do it. Murphy Brothers is on second, and self storage behind them. Right, so I'll, I'll highlight Murphy Brothers now. Also facing Fenimore, they're the nearest nearest position to Fenimore Road. Yeah. I got the best views of the traffic. All right. Can we go back to the zoning table for a moment, unless we have absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Meg, know that I am working those zoning tables furiously. I'm constantly trying to tweak those numbers to all coincide in the right formulas. So um, we noted we noted some discrepancies. We'll double check because it's a lot of formulas. Right, and I saw that in some of the comments. I also <laughs> look at some uh, briefly. Uh, I did, yeah, I, I couldn't possibly have any more Excel spreadsheets than I have now. Um, what I don't see is parking in the zoning compliance schedule. Oh, right at the bottom, is that helpful? Um, yep, parking is right at the bottom. Here you go. It's on all the zoning I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I see off-street parking. Off-street parking is okay. parking not what? beyond your property. So you didn't change the parking requirements, even though you changed some of the uses. I, 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 yeah. I haven't gone at length. I haven't looked at this. I saw, but I saw a little bit of discussion that seemed to be very similar to before this design had changed and arguing why the 25 or 26 spaces was um, sufficient, even though the it called for the 137. I just didn't see any discussion about what is required for the new uses that you have. Tony, so, I'll let you feel yeah. that. So you know we'll, 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 again, there's office space that's that's consistent, but we will provide a discussion uh, as a response to the comments. And again, we only received the AKRF comments uh, late, late last night, as well as the Keller session comments. Obviously, we we could not respond within a day to those, and I'm certainly you know you obviously haven't had the opportunity to review the. PFEIS and certainly not any comments. So we will be providing those additional comments to you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So um, I, I, what I will be looking at, I, obviously it, this is a overview that you're giving us right now. Thank you very much. And I know that we'll be reviewing all the comments and things, um, but you are going to speak uh, to something about the flood mitigation or what you were thinking about in this new design. Are we getting to that portion? Do you want to give sure. an overview so, of, of that? Michael, Michael Stein is, is available and he's on the call. So Mr. Stein, I'll turn it over to you, please. 
Yes, good evening. Uh, if you just unshare screen, Kim, I'll... I will drop it and you're all you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so for the, the first screen I'm putting up, uh, good evening, Michael Stein, uh, President of Hudson Engineering. Um, so the first screen I'm putting up is for uh, a volumetric analysis of the, the, the of the existing and proposed uh, flood volume within the within the hundred year flood plain. Um, the, the different colors rep represent different elevations within the property. Uh, so what we've done is we've analyzed going up incrementally the storage at each of those between each of those elevations, and then we have a cumulative storage volume uh, that we have in the existing conditions as well as we have in the proposed conditions. Uh, mm -hmm. Overall, in the proposed conditions, we have a slight increase in flood storage volume. Um, so we're, we're meeting with the requirements are, um, um, Mr. Mr. Keller from Keller Sessions had requested that we eliminate the, the buildings from within the footprint of that analysis, uh, which we have gone through. And from uh, this, the letter that came through today uh, from the Keller Sessions office, uh, they were satisfied with, with the changes we had made to this. Um, I'm going to switch over to our stormwater management plan. So basically, again, one of the, the, the couple key factors in looking at the, the site was first the volumetric analysis to make sure we weren't usurping any flood storage volume to make sure we provided a comparable volume to what was existing on the site beforehand. Uh, second, there's actually overall, and, and I think Ms. Martelli mentioned it earlier, is that there's an overall decrease in impervious area of the site. So we're, we went down, I think, about 1,250 square feet. And um, based upon the reduction of impervious area, uh, it is qual this would, site would qualify as redevelopment as far as New York State DEC regulations, where we the main requirement for water, stormwater mitigation is going to be uh, water quality uh, remediation. Um, so we've provided multiple uh, water quality components in the stormwater design. Mm -hmm. First, the existing building, even though it's not part of the new, <clears throat> the, the existing building, uh, the runoff from coming from the roof is going into a rain garden right along uh, Waverly Avenue. The runoff from the parking lot is collected um, between trench drains, drain inlets, and that passes through a mechanical separator and that ties into the catch basin in, within the street as and the runoff coming from all the roof leader drains of the building. They're tributary to uh, a tiered level rain garden on this side of the property where the water is filtered through a filter media. And ultimately, once the filter goes through the filter media is released to the catch basin within the street. Can you can you explain what happened um, during the, la the storm of earlier this uh, last month? Ida. Ida. Can you tell, well, how was the site in its current condition affected by Ida? The site was flooded. Okay. And <laughs> if that <laughs> happened, if we had the same rain flood condition in, which will not be a hundred years, whatever, however many years it will be before we have that, what will this, what will your, how will your plan change what happened in Ida or does it not? Well, the same thing happened. My it, question it, may it not really, be right, correct, but you understand what I'm saying. No, no, I, I do. And as I initially mentioned with the volumetric analysis, we have a minor de a minor increase in flood storage volume on the site. It, it will be imperceptible. It won't make, it, it really, with that small increase, there would be no difference in level in the flood elevations. Theoretically, a, a billionth of a foot lower, but again, it would be imperceptible. When you said earlier about the site was flooded, can you just explain what you mean by that? Was it closed? Was it was it damaged? Were any of the customers' contents damaged? Was it closed for business? Were portions of it emptied? I mean, could you? I, I would defer to. Um, I, I, I think Mike Murphy's on the line. Um, well, wouldn't you have to know that to make your assessment, is my question. No, because we're keeping, by going through the volumetric analysis, we're going through um, what volumes of flood storage are currently are currently on site and are proposed to be on site. So whether or not 
um, they they had flooding and had damage, the, it, the volumetric analysis would have made the same. Well, if it's and, and, and the, and the and site, and the site, and the site also not, then, wouldn't it? And the site also does not have the stormwater improvements that Mr. Stein walked you through and the FAIS and DIS demonstrate. Right. It also doesn't have half of the improvements on it. Okay. I'm with it. I'll say it. Well, I'll review it. Okay. So does somebody know the extent or you'll address that later? Um, we 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 can we can certainly address it later. We can we can collect that information and provide it to you in the uh, in the revised FEIS. Because I thought parts of I thought the building was closed and parts of the contents was destroyed, etc. We we can we can we can get that information and provide some. Well, are you aware of it now, or is this just? I mean, I don't want to play with this thing, but you know, I don't want you to waste your time, and I don't want to waste mine. But I appreciate you can get it, but you're the applicant, and this is our FEIS. So my question is a Correct. simple and, one. And, and, so my and, question and, is a simple one: Does anybody know what occurred there or not? Because right now I'm hearing not. Yeah, no, that's, that, that, that's that's certainly not the case, and, and certainly okay, so this is not, And Mr. Newfeld, as you know, the, this process in the FAIS is that we're we're to take comments and provide the comments in in the FAIS document, which will become your document. So we'll provide the the responses in an appropriate way, in a way that is addresses the the comments, um, not only from AKRF Keller Sessions, but from the board members, and certainly to the extent that the board has a public hearing, uh, we'll have to address that as well. So right now, you're not prepared to explain the nature of the damage that took place. That's all I'm asking. Yep, we, we'll, all. we'll provide it. We'll oh, no, I'm asking, you, I'm asking you a question. Try me on this one. I'm, I'm sorry, and I don't want to belabor this point, and neither do you. But right now, is someone able to tell us in, in one paragraph what the extent of the damage and that took place and the impact of the flooding in Ida was? I don't have that information for you this evening, but we can certainly get that information for you. Um, okay, why don't you proceed with your where you were or what was next on your uh, that, that that summarizes where we wanted to provide the overview and, and the the market changes that were made since the DIS. Um, we believe that it's a market improvement over what was previously presented as part of the DS and then the prior iteration of the project. It's obviously in response to the comments uh, from the board. We believe we've been very responsive to the comments and concerns. Right there. Uh, we just received the AKRF memoranda, uh, which we are just going through right now in, in order to be able to address. And sure. uh, we understand that your, your next board meeting, the, old, the board would have had the opportunity to review the FEIS, which you apparently haven't done, uh, have, have the opportunity to do so to date. So we look forward to your comments next month. In the interim, we will be working on responding to uh, the comments that were received uh, this evening, as well as in the AKRF memoranda. And as Mr. Stein indicated, the uh, Kellard Sessions memorandum uh, indicates that we've addressed all of their outstanding comments. Okay. Okay. Um, Robin, okay. I would just ask this. I mean, uh, we uh, we have a big agenda next month. I mean, I think we're going to have some time for this or a separate day. I, I don't know yet. I don't think applications aren't due yet, Ashley. Do you have any idea what's come in for next month? I don't. I haven't been forwarded anything from Wintering. Yeah, so we don't yet. know. So I mean, we have no hold, applications for this month. Or, so maybe so hold it down to two or three, and otherwise, you know, if we're going to bite the bullet on this thing, just get into it and read it and study it. I, mean, I want to be fair to them and, you know, fair to all of us. To I, I think if it turns out that we have a lot of applications, which we don't have yet, um, we may have to consider having a work session to discuss this like we did when we originally discussed yeah. the draft EIS. But let's wait and see, because if we don't really have many new applications, then I think it's not a problem to do it at the next meeting. So I think we need to wait and see. Hey, or you can consider just limiting the number you put on next. Well, let's wait and see what we get. And then uh, I would rather have a work session because I don't want to delay people okay. who need a special okay. permit or um, a variance okay. in order to do something. I, I would rather just have a work session to deal with this if it turns out that we have a lot of applications. Right, okay. Dennis, do you have any idea, you know, whether you've been uh, sending people here? 
That's that's what I'm here for. So uh, as of right now, there's currently two that I'm aware of. When's the cutoff date? Not for a while yet. Yeah, next, um, I believe it's the middle of next week, uh, but I uh, don't don't hold me to that. Ashley would know better. I, I think you're right, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it's like three weeks before the meeting. So I think if we only have two applications, I think we can probably hear this at the meeting. We don't have a lot of applications left from, to, you know, closed applications to discuss, so I think we're probably okay. Um, but I will, after we get the, if we find out how many we have, I can send out, an, you know, um, we can send out an email and if board members want to have a special work session, we'll have a work session. If at that point you're concerned about time, we'll just add a work session. Yeah, we would just want to coordinate with that with you because we have to put a notice sign on the property. So if there is going to be a, a special meeting work session, we just want to make sure that we coordinate the appropriate notice. Yeah, we, we would let you know. Of course. And we want to make sure that we're there as well. <laughs> One question, Robin, is, is, is this more conducive for an in-person meeting? Yeah, anyway. All right. Well, I, we just discussed that the next meeting was going to be a Zoom meeting. Now, is there some... Are you saying that you want to have this done at an in-person meeting, or are you okay with a Zoom meeting, whether it's the next meeting or? So well, I don't know what you're asking. Well, I think next meeting when the it won't be a final. Well, it's fine. That's good. That's a, we, I, we, I, I actually find when when we're looking at plans and discussions, it's actually simpler on Zoom sometimes because. Yeah, I was thinking I would add a board or on, up on the wall. This is actually easier when you're when you're highlighting something. Um, right. Especially if we're going to be doing any wordsmithing of text, it's a little easier to be able to pull it up on the screen so everyone can follow along. I'm with you. Gotcha. Right. And if nothing has changed, um, uh, Jerry, the village manager, sent out a memo um, about a week ago, I believe, week and, week and a half ago, that all meetings were made on Zoom until January. Unless something or anybody's done anything within the last couple of days, I believe that holds true. To doing all meetings till January. We have FEMA occupying the courtroom to a degree. And um, that's oh. what it's really. So I'll, I'll double check with, with, the, uh, with the uppers and Jerry tomorrow uh, to see where the village stands. And I'll, I'll send that to Ashley. Oh, yeah, yeah, if you, yeah, please do that because we already had a discussion about that tonight. <laughs> and while we said the next meeting was going to be on Zoom, we left the December meeting open. So if in fact we can't have a meeting in person yet we would like to know that that was the last i heard as well but i wasn't sure if you'd heard something different since then okay all righty all right I'll, I'll keep you posted yeah. um okay so ashley they've done they've said what they have to say do, are you now going to explain your comments or do we just read what or what's next um, I think you, so. Basically, I, just a brief overview of my comments are: you know, we noticed some inconsistencies that need to be corrected with some of the numbers. Um, we offered some wordsmithing suggestions to put it a little bit more in into the village's voice. Um, but I, I think that at this point, the applicant can take those comments and go back and and provide a red line copy of the document for the next submission, so we can see how they made those changes. And that'll also give the board some opportunity to review the comments and see what additional comments that they have. And during this next month, if you have any comments or questions, you can email me individually and I can start a running list that we can provide the applicant as well. That's similar to what we did with the original DEI. Okay. That, is that the memo we have here of October 6th? Yes. Yes, yes. So that's the memo I, I sent out last night. And then and again, I apologize it's it was late, but uh, we only had two weeks to read That's the large document and I wasn't Nothing expecting problem, anyone to take any action on it tonight. So Okay. All right. And I can pick up a copy of the next week at the, at the village, right? Yes. Any, uh, the, the document I'm just is laughing there. Because, so. Yeah. I once went to get one a while ago. It was more in a COVID and I'll tell you, it was <laughs> three trips and begging and it was like a handoff anyway, but good. Okay. Super. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so is there anything else, Ashley, we need to do about this? No, I think uh, I think we're all set for this evening. Okay, so um, 
I think the, the I think we covered the agenda. The only other thing then is, I believe council wanted us to take a certain action with respect to 130. I think we're done with okay. with this application thank, for now. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. You. Thank you for the opportunity Cheers. to present. We look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think council wanted us to do something with respect to. Um, Sure. Uh, and, 130 and it, beach application. Yeah, and, and it's not, not not as if council wanted to do something, but the question was presented to us uh, whether or not the uh, certain changes could be made to the resolution that was adopted relative to the 130 Beach Avenue property in, in September. Certain changes were proposed to the whereas clauses, and we found those uh, changes to be um, non-substantive and um, you know, unrelated to the actual operative clauses of the resolution. They were more in the spirit of clarifying the background whereas clauses to reflect the discussion that occurred at the meeting. Um, so it's fine to consider those changes. And if the board would like, they can vote to confirm uh, whether or not they think those changes should be made given that they are consistent with the discussion at the last meeting, if that's the board's intention. Um, Meg, if you'd like to discuss the substance of some of those uh, changes, I can turn it over to you. I can also put up a red light on my screen if you would like. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Um, um, I, I find the red lining is sometimes is what, where we get um, it's distracting or we don't read it the same way. It actually can be confusing, but thank you very much for the offer. Um, yeah, the reason for the changes is to improve the clarity and accuracy of the factual record of the resolution. It has nothing to do with the findings or the reasoning behind the findings of the resolution. It has nothing to do with the outcome of the resolution. Um, the first whereas clause that has changes um, is the one that describes the zoning attributes of the lot and the buildings of the lot at the time of the violation. So the goal of that one is simply to clarify what were the zoning attributes. Um, our chair, Robin, had sent in some um, suggested changes, but they came in very late just that night before the meeting. So most of us, um, at least I was not able to review them. We were seeing them for the first time during the meeting. Um, we were looking at something that was track changes, which again, I find difficult to read. And I know there was some oral instruction so um, it was difficult to understand what the final paragraph would be. Uh, when I saw the printed resolution of the paragraph, um, I have to say, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So I don't mean, I think that we were all aligned that the purpose was to simply clarify what were the zoning attributes at the time of the violations for the lot and for the buildings. But when I read, whereas the property on which the premises is located is within the R5 zoning district, which permits one family dwellings, but the premises is located on a lot which has a legal non-conforming um, um, three family use consisting of two residential structures, one of which is a two family and the other is a one family structure located in two structures consisting of two residential structures of which the premises are a two family residential structure having three stories, the building and a third unit located in a separate structure. So I think something got lost in there between the track changes and the oral instructions. So it definitely needed to be tightened up because it seemed um, kind of just to be circular. I, I wasn't quite sure what was meant by that paragraph. So um, I submitted this paragraph, whereas the lot on which the premises is located is within the R5 zoning district, which is zoned as a one family residence district but the premises is located on three floors in a legal pre-existing non-conforming two-family residence, the building, on a lot that also includes a legal one-family residence. So I think that's easier to read. It's clearer. I'm not quite sure where uh, the last, the last paragraph definitely needed some sort of editing because it was sort of repetitive. Um, so simply uh, an attempt to clarify um, um, the zoning the zoning attributes it wasn't to add any new information or change any information that we were all uh working with um i also inserted exactly village zoning code terms so that's why it says for instance it's zoned as a one family residence district that's what it says in the code um the second whereas clause um is what um 
to list the 2020 resolutions finding on the notice of violation 19658. It came up in a listing of just the actions that had been taken on each of the notices of violations. Um, again, um, our chair offered a change uh, to this clause and um, has suggest, made the suggestion or the recommendation that we include in, uh, the finding that was actually in the 2020 resolution. And so we were looking at that quote. Um, I didn't object that you would, I thought the recommendation was that we would put the finding from 2020 resolution in this resolution next to that uh, notice of violation. I didn't realize at the time that it wasn't the full finding. It was only an expert excerpt of that finding. So the excerpt said, as long as the applicant remedies the illegal alterations to eliminate the separate dwelling unit, um, it didn't include the full finding, which is what I suggest instead should be added. And that full finding is that the resolution, 2020 resolution, Dix agrees that the building has lost the status of pre-existing non-conforming use as a two-family residence and decides that as long as the applicant remedies the illegal alterations to remove the separate dwelling unit, he retains his non-conforming use status. So um, all I simply did was uh, to make it more accurate was to have the full excerpt than to choose to just put a portion of the findings that were listed in the 2020 resolution for that notice of violation. So again, none of these changes have any bearings on where uh, we found on this resolution or the reasonings for the findings. These are the factual record that was presented in the, in the resolution. That's what I have to say. All right, um, I, I will say, I don't want, there's no point in, um, from my perspective, there's no point in getting into a full discussion of all these changes. Most of the, there were many other changes that were not discussed. They are not consistent. We did discuss the- I'm sorry, Robin, I have to cut you off. There were these two changes. What other changes are you referring to that were I'm not- I'm sorry, I have your red line. Your red line shows an awful lot of changes. These are um, the only two changes. So I don't think you should be, you might be misinformed. Um, we could go okay. to the red these line. The I will read you all the changes that I have. I'm sorry, um, Robin. I don't know what red line you are referring to. I, red line you circulate. I'm sorry, excuse me. I submitted to council these two paragraphs and the fact that there was a typo, which you, I think you found as well, that we had discussed the 200 should be 220. I did not. I did not request any other changes. There are no other changes. I do not know what red line. You have to refer back to my email. In my email, I isolated the two changes. It is only those two paragraphs which I just recited. So you are accurate to say that there were many changes. There were not. Okay, hold on a minute. I'm, I'm a little confused because I have a, hold on. I have a red line that you circulated on. Um, I believe that was the original red line that we were all working from because the- No, no, no. I'm sorry, the document that, that our council sent was a PDF. So in order to work on a Word doc and show what I wanted, it was to only use something that had formerly been a track change. He presented a track change to show all the changes he made during our discussion, plus the PDF. So I think you're looking at the one, the comparative one that Charlie sent in. I might have attempted to put my couple of changes in there, but I definitely, in our email conversation, I definitely then isolated, didn't put it in a document, these two paragraphs, and I think I also added the typo that a 200 should be 220. There were no other changes, Robin, no other changes. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm looking at the, e sorry, I'm looking at the email chain um, to see if that's right. If it is, then. I'm um, sorry I, that you would even say if that's right. You are saying that I am not saying that something is not true, Robin? I, 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 there's exactly some confusion. I, I have to see where the confusion is. And that's all, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Are you looking at a document called comparative? Right now, I'm not looking at anything. I'm looking at emails. I'm not looking at any particular document at this moment. Um, so, um, 
It's okay. So that's right. I'm just looking at emails. I'm not looking at a specific. Um, yeah. Robin, what you would need to do is look at this document with those two paragraph changes against the PDF that Charlie sent out. I don't see any point to start looking. I could I could find the email I sent it in. That's no problem. But what we're doing is you're comparing the one with the two changes, which council has now or we prepared that has those two changes next to what was sent to us. And you will find is just those two paragraphs plus the typo. Um, I'm sorry. Hang on. So I'm sorry, Rob, were you already offering to show the final document with- No, no, I'm, I was looking- I'm sorry, I just asking Rob a question. Rob had, excuse me, Rob had proposed to put up a red line document. Was that one with all the changes that we were gonna discuss at, or before the vote or was it a Word doc with just the paragraphs that I added it? What, what I had someone create today was to take um, the two PDF documents. One was the final PDF that you created with those two paragraph changes in it. Compare it to the previous PDF with everything accepted so that just the two paragraphs that you just discussed now show the, the, their edits. Now, because I took two PDFs and compared them, it's a bit sloppy because the um, uh, formatting doesn't match up precisely. So it could get confusing with that, but I can bring that up to show those two paragraphs that you discussed which reflect those two sets of changes. Um, okay, I have found the email and you are correct, Meg. There were few, there, or there were not as many changes as I had. Um, I think I had a couple of grammar questions, which I just let go. I I'm not worried about the grammar questions. Uh, there were fewer changes. I remember what the problem was. I had thought that there were other things said at that hearing that were not included, but it doesn't matter. This is what, what so what I really want to say is, I don't want to discuss these. I don't act, uh, discuss the substance or anything of the changes. The three members who have voted for the resolution have previously indicated that they have approved this document as changed. And since they have all previously agreed to approve this document as changed, it is not worth discussing. So let us just proceed to the vote once Rob clears up what we are voting on. Are we voting on confirming that this is the same as the original resolution or are we voting to confirm that this is the resolu that the resolution has been modified and as modified this is the resolution I'm just a little confused on what the actual vote Charlie is. dealt with that on an email yeah and, and and what that just to, to paraphrase that email the, the the motion or what you'd be voting on to confirm is whether or not these changes uh, reflect the comments that were made at the September 23rd meeting. But accurately they're just to amend the to correct the, to them there there are no changes to the findings whatsoever correct correct yeah. um, but i'm not uh, but i don't necessarily agree that the resolution as it's written and it doesn't matter because we're going to vote and i don't want to there's no point in spending time doing this since you've already all agreed that this is correct um i just want to uh, say that I'm not sure that this is actually all correct. I think that things were left out if you go through and listen to the hearing. So let us just vote on this. Um, do you need a motion and do you need someone to second it or does it not need that since it's just a confirmation? What do you need, Rob? I, I think it would be appropriate to have a motion, a second and a vote. Okay, if someone would do Can that. Can you suggest how the motion should read, Rob? Uh, it, it could read that it's a, a motion to confirm that the changes proposed to the resolution uh, reflect comments made at the September 23rd meeting, uh, directing that the changes be adopted and that the chair and secretary sign the resolution with the changes implemented. Someone want to make that resolution? I'm sorry, but that resolution, it reflects comments because 
instance that Robin would like to have the findings from the 2020 resolution um, listed in, in this resolution, but it doesn't reflect, we didn't comment on the fact of whether that was a portion of it or the full one. So I'm not sure that that resolution is accurate. Can we, that comment, that comment came afterwards that it was only a portion of the excerpt and that's the it, change. It, most that, that, it, it, that it's consistent with the conversation at, at the meeting because the okay. rotation was, was in existence at the time. Right. There was a. We just expanded and made it and made it the full quotation. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Did you make the motion, Meg? Uh, Greta, Greta, you're on mute. Um. Sorry. Um. Just a question, Rob. Should we also include? That these that we've deemed that these changes are not material. Uh, yes, that's that's perfectly appropriate to include. And that they don't, and that they don't change the findings. Correct. Right. But it, that they're not material. That they do not change the findings. Uh, by definition, they're part of the whereas clauses, uh, not the operative clauses. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All right, Meg. Yes. Greta. Yep. David. Yes. And I vote no. Okay, we are done. All right, um, move, to, move to, oh, adjourn. <laughs> yes, please go right ahead. I move to adjourn. Is there a second? I second. There's only three of us. <laughs> four of us. I mean, four of us, yes. Um, Oh, All right, Greta, right. yes, we adjourning? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, everyone, yes, let's adjourn. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good everybody. Thank you, everybody. Okay. See you um, in a month. Have fun in Delaware, David. Thank you. I will. Take care. Bye-bye.